Hello, Starfinders, and Yo. welcome back to another episode of Space Flicks and Kill. <laughs> I am your host and GM for the evening, Krifu Bernal. My pronouns are he, him. You are looking at a, a pale-skinned human male. I guess we're all humans here. Human male. Um, <laughs> with uh, brown hair, goatee, and eyebrows, brown eyes, uh, rosy cheeks, a little gray eyeshadow, um, and some perfect pink lips. Let's go ahead and meet our cast, starting this time with Inez. Oh, shit. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Inez. I use uh, she, her pronouns. Um, you are uh, seeing a very pale-skinned woman. <laughs> um, everyone always calls me the vampire of the family, and I've leaned into it fully. Um, I have very short hair, like very, very short hair shaved off. Uh, I'm wearing a, a, a mix of purple and black eyeshadow and some silver in there. And I have some perfectly arched brows, who, which look very evil. Um, and um, I'm wearing a flannel and a little a little cute top. The outfit is very cute, a little necklace. Um, let's say to, uh, tonight I'm an end for for the rest of this campaign. I'm playing uh, Chriseth Fanvire, the uh, what we have dubbed the Dragon Dommy Mommy of this group. Um, yeah. Chris is very cool, uh, very very loud in battle, very soft spoken out of battle. Um, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm very excited. We're gonna have a lot of fun. And hmm. yeah, I can never quite get the order, but I got this time. Hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm Pan. Um, how's it going? Glad to be back, guys. Uh, we missed you. I'm looking forward to playing again. Um, I um, am a um, black person. I have um, black nail varnish, um, slight beard. Um, I wear a hat pretty much 24 7, so you'll never know what's under there. Uh, glasses. And also, I am playing Grey Lance, who is um, the, the big bull sword dad of the group. Um, he's uh, <laughs> fresh from. Fresh from uh, the saunas, fresh from getting a, a, that fresh cut, he's ready for action. Nail varnish. Yes. Not nail polish. Maybe. I never think too hard about it. Isn't no, it? British people call it nail varnish, not polish. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Varnish is for wood. Well, and then it's also no for an <laughs> Anyway. I, this time I wasn't even the one thinking yeah. it. Oh my god. That's crazy. I know somebody in the chat was thinking it, so I'm gonna get out of here. Yeah, exactly. Go and ahead. Anyway, mm -hmm. let's go on over to Hedgehog. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Hedgehog. Uh, you're looking at a white, slightly tan skinned. I'll, I'll, I'll decide the color one day. Um, male with brown, very messy hair, black glasses, the leftover of a beard, which is coming back far too aggressively. Um, and a white, blue, and purple, technically, although they have faded, a uh, striped shirt. Um, I'll be playing tonight Alistair, uh, he, him, human mechanic, who is probably the grumpy one of the group. <laughs> although not, in not intentionally grumpy, just comes across that way with everyone being so bright and happy he becomes he becomes the grumpy one by proxy how um, are grumpy bright and happy apart from puka and, i i don't know everyone has a more positive outlook i think alice's outlook is just very there i i'd rather be at home right now <laughs> man that's that's a lot of <laughs> one person oh yeah my whole school would murder in front of me the other person i have a hard time at home and that's why i'm grumpy okay <laughs> And hi, I'm Ida. My pronouns are she and her, and I am a Latine femme woman with olive tanned uh, skin, dark eyes, dark hair. I'm wearing a, a pink uh, cardigan and a striped top. And I am playing Puka, whose pronouns are also she and her. Puka is a three foot tall slash one meter tall uh, skittermander. So think in Ewok with six arms. Puka has uh, one of them is a prosthetic mechanical arm, a 
shiny, like cherry Porsche red colored arm with a laser on it. And uh, she has like two big poofy uh, uh, hair puff balls over her head. And she has perpetually a glowing, warm orange yellow ball over her shoulder that hovers that she refers to as glowy. Awesome. This is our <laughs> cast and crew for the evening. The main <laughs> cast of the Space Flicks and Kill Year of the Scoured Stars actual play, affectionately and officially known as the Second Seekers. Normally, the Second Seekers' role in the Starfinder Society is to uh, work for the First Seeker. In the case, the First Seeker, Luazi El Sebo, who has taken over since the Starfinder Society suffered a devastating loss uh, over a year ago in the Scoured Stars. But tonight, Luazi has asked you to do a mission for someone else. Venture Captain Nyaj, the bleachling gnomish woman who we met like in episode one. Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, we had, we, had, we impressed her with a uh, hmm. teamwork. Yeah, she was very sort of no nonsense, but mm -hmm. you were definitely um, impressing. Okay. Oh, no, the good old days. The teamwork old... and not getting people blown up. That's what we impressed her with. Yes, exactly. We don't have to tell her about the people we blew up already since then, right? Yeah, no, that seems that seems uh, seems smart. <laughs> okay. So, I did a smart. <laughs> <laughs> Our episode today begins with the inky void. The camera opens, filled with twinkling stars, and the lingering forms of starships outside of Absalom Station. This chrome gray steel spinning top in space. As we zoom out, we see that this is actually a holographic display that we're looking at. And in the room, we can see our Starfinders gathered around the display with Venture Captain Nyaj, this short gnomish woman with uh, shortly clo short, closely cropped like gray white hair and these gray white eyes um, who is very busy interacting with the hologram making concise finger motions you can see she's actually like sending orders off to various ships and uh, starfinders on the docks of Absalom station using this interactive display um, as she turns around to greet you all Ah, the Triaxis team. Excellent. Here. She clicks her data pad uh, a couple mm -hmm. times, and you all receive a briefing for the mission. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm glad you're here. We require important people to take on an important task. Uh-oh. I, I kind of, like, whisper audibly. <laughs> Is she buttering us up? Uh, when you say that, Puka, can you go ahead and describe what you look like? Uh, whispering over to all of her teammates who stand <laughs> very many heads and shoulders above her is a um, tawny, brown, tawny brown furred uh, skittermander. Um, she's wearing... Uh, my goodness, it's been so long since we've upgraded her armor. But she has a leather technical belt. She has a couple of uh, guns slung to her back. She's a knife on her hip. She has goggles over her head as well. And there's always perpetually like this kind of twinkle in her eye and this like kind of a uh, know-it-all smile on her face as well. That's, that's all mischief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would hope I don't have to do any buttering. Agent Puka, your work precedes you. The tasks that you've accomplished for, uh, for the first seeker have been remarkable, and I've been following your careers very closely. Keep going. 
she doesn't laugh because she doesn't laugh. <laughs> um, but maybe, just maybe, there's like a little twitch at the side of her lip. Mm -hmm. I'll summarize. You may or may not have heard, but the society has recently finished renovation of an old building to construct a new lodge in Kumo, a trade port on the packed world of Triaxis. Um, I think at this point the camera zooms up. <laughs> Prizith. Uh-oh. Prizith, what do you look like and how do you react when she says <clears throat> So Prizith is a I keep forgetting this fucking height. Seven she was she tall. No, taller. She gets taller every was, time you describe her. She was like ten foot it. because she's a, she's not she's a little short than her rival. She's like yeah, I think she's like ten foot. Because Greylands is seven foot. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely taller than Greylands. <laughs> how much? How how tall do they normally get? Jesus Christ! You said you said ten, 10 foot. foot. At least yeah. ten. It's foot. Ten, yeah, foot, ten foot, and we're keeping it at that. <laughs> she is ten foot tall. Period. Um, she's ten foot tall, and she um is a dragonkin. Um, so she has. Draconic features. She has this long snout, I'd say. Um, and uh, she has all kinds of skills all over. Um, the skills are all black. Um, and um, the the belly where it gets a little lighter is um, it has like a some sort of purple tinge to it. Um, same with her wings, which are of course, webbed, and the webbing has like a little bit of a purplish tinge to it. Um, she has a long tail. Um, she is very big, and she's uh, she oh she's wearing this uh, this plate, um, this breastplate uh, that has a symbol of a rising sun on it, and it has like a elbow length for her. Um, red cape on uh on the back and it's a it's a it's a silver breastplate basically um i think that's most of her features explained i think um she reacts well she thinks about having to go to triaxis she doesn't react much Because there's things going through her of like, I get to go back to Triaxis, but also I have to go back to Triaxis. Um, so there's there's a a duality going on where she likes going back, but also is a very is a little bit like skeptical about going back. She's a little scared. Okay. Um, Venture Captain Nayaj continues the um lodge curator is a personal friend of mine yes i have friends you guys cough oh really yes agent gray lance she stares at you real hard gray lance what do you look like <laughs> gray lance uh firstly didn't realize that gnomes had such good hearing <laughs> uh, secondly, he is, as mentioned, a um, seven-foot uh, noir, which is a Starfinder kind of minotaur border alien man. Um, he is wearing um, form-fitting um, dark black armor with uh, red lines going up and down it, uh, which he stole from a demon. Um, <laughs> But he's also scratched into the side of it um enough markers for some of his his badges that he used to wear in his old armor as well um notches and things stuff that really means only stuff to him um but it, it reminds me of, of of good times and good comrades uh he has gray as the name implies um fur body hair whatever um with as you can see behind me my point again this one yeah as you see behind there me you this is literally him there he is <laughs> uh he is a big bull man he's got big bull horns which have been slightly warped now thanks to um exposure to radiation they're a little bit more uh, gnarled like a goat's horns 
um he's actually been um talking to um puka about maybe getting some kind of um some kind of carving tattoo thing done on them i think it might make it look cool mm. puka does like very well not softly because gray can take a hit she's going to like knock your your, your knees and shins and like that's that nice well i didn't think you'd hear me <laughs> of course you're a, you're a friend so my I mean, we, yeah, personal yes. friend yes yes the freld the Feldrin. Uh, that's the Feldrin. He asked for experienced agents to impress several local representatives during the opening ceremony of the uh, new Starfinder Starfinder Society base. Oh, I try to base. I'm told it should be a quick meet and greet mission. No bombs under the stage this time. Well, Agent Alistair, <laughs> undoubtedly either a war is going to break out or some sort of unexpected disaster is going to happen. And I'd like to have agents on the field that I can trust when that happens. That's Alistair. something. <laughs> Alistair, what do you look like? Uh, like, I think... So Alice is kind of the duality middle. He's he's the human six foot one, normally quite tall in most groups, but in this group decidedly small, um, on average. Um, he's not kind of. It was brown hair going forward, but after the sauna, the hair is now combed back, so he's now got like a curved fringe. Mm. Um, he's got quite rosy cheeks now the much like softer complexion like the permanent scowl that would normally be over Alistair has kind of eased off slightly um he's still wearing his normal business attire his you know his white shirt his tie with the um uh what's it called I had it before thin plate underneath it um to protect him um the uh waistcoat the felt waistcoat from the sauna episode uh he now has decided to wear permanently um as kind of a memoir since that place now has some oddly special meaning but he isn't quite sure what that means yet so is, he's trying to stay touch with, uh, he's with like, uh, but very much in touch um and yeah that's basically him so fucking cute, I'm gonna cry. There you go. There you <laughs> so go. Cute. Your mission, <clears throat> Nayash says, is to ensure that this opening goes as smoothly as possible. I'm sure Zef Zefeldrin will have you talking to notables and guests and whatnot, but I want you keeping the lodge safe and secure. I want you to make that your top priority. Triaxis has numerous factions that oppose one another. And while we've oh, made really? Yes. <laughs> while we've made friends with some, eh, some others may perceive the society as a threat. Wow. Alright, Pookie, you're laying on a little bit thick there. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I've requested some additional medical supplies for your group, should aggressive negotiations prove necessary. Um and at that point. He will hand you some extra potion. Woo! Uh, that's six Mark II serums of healing. Damn, oh my six. god. Nice. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll divvy that definitely. Um, she gestures um, out towards the holographic image of mm. Absalom Station. And like zooms in towards specifically the Starfinder docks where she was before very avidly passing out orders. Um, and we can see two starships like come up on screen with specs and stats next to them as well. Uh, one of them is the familiar, now familiar Pegasus, a sort of brownish red starship that you took on your last mission um, out into, not the last, yeah, on the last two missions yeah. um, mm -hmm. out to the vast. The other one is the Drake, a more like silver white ship. Um, she reminds you the Drake 
The Drake's superior hull and shielding means you're most likely to bring it back in peace. But the Pegasus is... Uh, I, I know you're familiar with it, and I've authorized you to use it if you like, if you want to show off the Society's exploratory efforts to make a better impression. Um, In terms of, like, say, modern cars, if we know that um, the Pegasus is like a Corvette, what are we talking about the Drake here? I'm the wrong person to ask that question. <laughs> okay, all right. That's fair. All Basically, right. if we... <laughs> the Drake is more combat-focused, the Pegasus more exploration-scanning-focused. And looks-wise. So one is a yeah, console yeah, we, and the other is a PC. Right God, one's Alienware and the other one's... <laughs> Razor? Know. Yeah, Razor. <laughs> Alienware's no good anymore. I don't know. Oh, exactly. Yeah, that, that works. I get that. <laughs> Oh my god. That makes sense okay. to me. Well, we're, we're, we're going... We're so, going a bike country. or an electrical bike? <laughs> no, I wouldn't no. say they're that different. Ah! Uh, um, seems to me if we're trying to try and make a good impression. Maybe so the Pegasus take, uh, is the uh, console. Is the exploration. Mm. No, yes. That's the PC. That's the PC. Yes. Uh, we took the Pegasus last time. The Drake is more combat focused, has higher shielding mm -hmm. and, and better guns. Higher HP, yeah. yeah. But yeah. the but the Drake, but the so the Pegasus is more maneuverable. Let's go. So it I, looks uglier. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I think um yeah, Grey looks at them and goes, you know, wouldn't hurt to come in looking a bit more uh, more I mean, business. I reckon we could probably switch up to the Drake today. And we're also because we're going to Triaxis and and that that other ship and I look up at Chris screen in my neck up is like <laughs> like kind of a bit representative. I think that's kind of badass for her. Drake, yeah. The I Drake understand what you mean. The Drake, yes. Great. Uh Nyash is already looking at her data pad where you can see like like several text messages like pop up and she's gonna look at it. And then, you know, tur turns off the display and says, I have to deal with some last minute supply issues. So let's keep this quick. Um, review your briefing, choose your starship, uh, if you just did. Um, and I don't know, last chance for questions. Seems, uh, hmm. seems pretty standard, head down, make a good impression. Uh, anything we should know about your, uh, your good friend? Is a Feldrin? Yeah. Yes. He's a friend, of course, and a good agent. While he doesn't have any interest in promotion, he has enough experience that we wanted him to manage the new lodge until more, perhaps, suitable candidates present themselves. I think you'll get along. I don't frivolously, frivolous, blip, blip. I don't frivolously select my friends. Hmm. Yeah. No. I, that makes sense. Actually. Fair enough. We'll make uh we'll make tracks are we your friends don't, God, God, i don't <laughs> think so God. i i don't think we have time to answer that question uh yeah i think we should get going actually oh uh, well, but i wanted to know i, to to <laughs> <laughs> I think you're nice I think you're getting dragged out and as you're leaving as you're getting dragged out and the last person like in the doorway she like looks up from her data pad gives you like a little wink <gasps> oh, oh. <laughs> Okay. So cute. Before we take off to Triaxis, mm -hmm. is there anything we want to do in Absalom to prepare? If anyone would like to do a culture or diplomacy check to recall knowledge or gather information about Triaxis and, and yeah. such? I think um, I would definitely, uh, knowing that we're walking into unfamiliar territory, want to do a little bit of a, um, you know, a little checkup. Hey, you! I'll well, yeah, I mean, he's, 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 uh, he's Great Loss is worried about, about Chris's like full disclosure. He's like, okay, if we're going to go here, let's make sure that, like, you know, we, we project not only good for, um, mm. so what was the name of the, um, of our contact again? For... The Zephaldrin. Zephaldrin. Not only for Zephaldrin, but like, we're, on, we're on Chris's home turf. We want to make it look good. So, yeah. P Puka would also use diplomacy to sort of uh, research what makes a good impression while still being Puka, and uh, <laughs> she'll, she'll even like uh, rope in Chris just like ask uh, like uh, bravado, strength, confidence, martial ability. If you a, a joke here and there is okay too. Um, 
Y yes. Well, the, the, I, I don't know if they want to be. Can't turn this off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I can uh, meet you halfway. You yes. They mm. they won't be too hardly to to very crude jokes. So keep the jokes to a martial level. That's confusing, but that's kind of exciting because I've never yes. heard that. <laughs> I like it. Uh, yes. Is that is that technically a help on a diplomacy role? <laughs> <laughs> is it? Uh, yeah, I mean, Chris is. That's mm -hmm. her, it's her home planet, so definitely mm -hmm. take a plus two Puka on your uh, diplomacy check. Mm -hmm. Math. Oh, I'll do. I'll do my culture. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Oh. Ooh, uh, nice. Okay, Grey Lance. If you want to make a culture check, there is a thirty DC. If you can hit that. No, you're muted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, no, no, we never 30. I got 15. Okay, 15. Yeah. All right. So close. 29, literally yeah. one point away. But yeah. Them's the dice. Okay, so um, Puka and Grey Lance, uh, you both know, and, and Krizuth as well, because this is her home planet. Triaxis, starting from the beginning, 10 plus. Triaxis is known as the Wanderer because of its irregular and eccentric orbit. It takes decades long, uh, or it has decades long summers and winters as it travels from the inner to the outer regions of the, so the solar system. So a full cycle takes 317 standard years. Yeah. Okay, that sounds like it sucks. <laughs> they are in the middle of winter do. at the moment. Oh, okay. Aww. That's what makes their people so like hardened. So resilient. Mm. They like hearing that. Mm. 15 plus. Right. So for again, for Greylands and Puka, you know the Triaxian culture is largely defined by the long conflict between the dragons of the Drake lands and the humanoids of the allied territories. The, the uh, local humanoids of Triaxis are known as Rhyphorians. Oh, they're like fuzzy elves, right? They're like fuzzy elves. Exactly. Um... We, we we saw some Rhyphorians the last time we in, interacted with Triaxians um, on that one planet in the Vast. Mm. Um, between the Drake Lands and the Allied Territories, you have the Skyfire Mandate, which is a very famous mercenary company, one of the most successful mercenary companies in the fact world. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Skyfire Mandate is a, a, the nation home to the Skyfire Legion. Um, and, of course, then we have the trade port of Kumo, which sits on the southern shore of the Mandate. So it's sort of like neutral territory between the dragons and the Rhyphorians. Repeat the neutral name. Uh, that would be the Skyfire Legion. Skyfire mm -hmm. Legion. Yeah. So uh, the Skyfire Mandate is like their yeah. home. Noted. Thank you. Um, they're, they're a mercenary group, right? Yes. Uh, neutral. And yeah. Kumo is the almost like the, it's basically like the capital city of the Mandate. I feel like Puka and, and Grey would know that just due to their, like, their past mm. as mercs. Totally. You've maybe even worked with the Legion before. Um, it's maybe even entirely possible that you've been to Kumo, which is in the temperate sort of um, equator zone mm. of Triaxis. So no snow, which will... Mm. At least you don't have to deal with that. Thank God. Um, Chrisith knows all of that as well, just being from Triaxis. Yes. Um, so it's humanoids versus dragons, and then there's some neutral party. Which is in the kind of made up of both. Got it. We keep the peace. Hmm. Um, just like I in. Think... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, please uh, go ahead. Chris, you know, just like in like D&D, &D, Pathfinder, Triaxis is, has all different types of dragons um, chromatic dragons, metallic dragons, uh, but they just because the color of your scales does not determine your alignment. We are. It is the future. We don't need to deal with that bullshit. Yes. All right. Uh, and I was saying that um, Chris is, Chris is, 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 her garrison was probably in the neutral field, I'd say. Like, somewhere in there, there should be, like, 
her garrison or like the 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 people that she used to go to night school with um yeah so um night school yeah <laughs> well they did get actually like like brought up as like knights like actual like sword wielding armor wearing like wear yes, the helmet was, with the tassel on it i originally heard night school as an at oh night. <laughs> oh yeah, god that's what i thought too, too. i like, was like evening classes no yeah. k-n-i-g-h-t <laughs> um yes um yes um so it's probably somewhere in there and that's also why she probably got very easily into the starfinder um company because she's like very accepting of whatever is out there whoever you know and sure. she actually wanted to explore all of that so yeah um Mm, Puka, so with mm. Chris's aid and talking to hard. various uh, like people at the Starfinder Society or around town, Puka gets around, knows a lot of people who know a lot of different things. Um, we got two more lores to drop. So 20 plus. <laughs> you know that the conflict between dragons and humanoids has cooled since interplanetary travel became possible little over 200 here. Posture check from Ooh. the chat. Oh. But some of the dragon-led oh, corporations me. or dragon core still look to expand their territory. And you know that they sow spies and sleeper agents throughout the allied territories and the sky firemen. Basically dragons be dragoning. <laughs> um, and lastly, The uh, the parapet mountains stretch along the Skyfire Mandate and serve as a natural barrier to the Drake Land. There are abandoned Dragon Legion outposts lying within the mountains' twisting passes, unclaimed due to rumors of haunts and curses. While the new Starfinder Society Lodge is likely to dispatch agents to explore these mountains, only the most experienced could survive such a treacherous region. Hmm. <laughs> Is that like a, I wonder if it's a very, Puka wonders if that's a very purposeful placement on their part. I can imagine so. I, I, I wonder like who, who you're talking to who gives you that bit of information. Like, like, yeah, they. I, I think like the people there would uh, respect uh, the the Starfinders for like taking on this thing, but if the Starfinders are good at it, will someone's feelings be hurt instead of like them being happy for us? You know, feelings mm. being hurt is a very light way of putting it. That, that, that's how that's how Buka would put yeah. it. Absolutely. Um, but yes, yeah, so there is because of that. I think that really is the where the, the, the sticking point is. Will the Drake lands, how will they really react to a Starfinder Society Lodge being planted on Priaxis, especially in Kuhn? Hmm. Okay. Wow. Chris, Before your, we... your, your oh. people and your planet are like really, really complicated. <laughs> they're, 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 that's really rich and that's so interesting. Hmm. I, 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 I really kind of feel I, 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 I can't claim to know but I kind of really think I feel I, I know a little better where you're coming from I'm, I'm glad you're you hmm. I'm really really um, glad you're you <laughs> thank you Vuka I am also glad I am me um, <laughs> it is very complicated living on triaxes mm. it's especially when you grow up in this neutral place where humans and dragons live together and however you know that outside of that it is something completely different um it's complicated for sure even it's the awesome. weather like yes. if 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 the ruling and the important people are in the like the cushy warm parts i'm sure they have feelings about people in the outposts and anywhere else outside the equa equatorial zones of course wow why can't people get along? <laughs> it's Puka's conclusion. I do not know, Puka. Why should it be? 
You and uh, I should get along so awfully. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, true. This the conflict has been um, with the gap. There, you know, there's like millennia of knowledge, information, sort of lost to time and space. But information, uh, ancient information, uh, pre-gap is what we refer to it. Shows that yes, I mean, even pre-gap, this this struggle was happening. Um, and in one of the Pathfinder First Edition adventure paths, you do get to travel to Triaxis and enmesh yourself into one of the, the conflict as well. Um, oh. If you're curious about that, check out the Reign of Winter adventure path. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. I'd, I think uh, Chrysalis would go around to everyone and tell them to pack something warm because it is going to be quite cold. And so she herself has sadly lost her fur coat. Uh, and so I think she'll, she'll go ahead and buy a new one, I'd say. A completely black fur coat. Mm. <laughs> Bofur. Mm. Bofur, yes. Yeah, actually, you read my mind because um, Ray was going to get um, uh, some new capes. Something a bit more oh. uh, good for the cold. So we also look like a unit again. Capes. Yeah. Yeah, we, we had those shoulder capes, remember? Yes. Yeah, but I think everyone what... had like, a kind. Oh, we, we still should, we should, la, 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 la. I think we still have those. Yeah, but these going to be like warmer ones. I, I pull out like the super wrinkled, <laughs> looks like yeah. a napkin to most of my party members. But yeah, you haven't even been looking after it. Those were expensive. <laughs> just iron it. I'll sit on it to uh, to take out the wrinkles. No, we have an iron. <laughs> you can just iron it. I'll do, I'll do it. Just... Okay, okay, you do it. Um, I don't know how. Oh no, I I'll mess uh, it up if I do it. <laughs> uh, that, that guy in like his in like his box is ironing. <laughs> oh my god! Very military. So <laughs> yeah, so funny. I was about to say, I was thinking weaponized incompetence. Uh, that's exactly right. <laughs> but I was yeah. about to say weaponized incontinence. <laughs> um, you know that's, what? That'll be the next character. <laughs> I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm ironing, not washing. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I think Chrysith is actually going for like the the Siberian look. Like oh. like she's trying to get there and, and, be, and be like in Mother Russia, very too, you know, like that. <laughs> that's what that's what she's trying to serve, I think. Love it. The 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 Xenia from Golden Eye look. Yes. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. Anything else before we take off? Um, uh, I'll go no, for I did, I did all my, like, my weaponry shopping mm -hmm. stuff previously, so I think I'm I'm good. Perfect. Oh, and the healing potions. What, everyone's getting one, and then there's two left, and then. Yeah, yeah. Let's do one each, two? and then there's two left to spare. Or uh, the two most mobile people. As usual, we'll give the, I'm going to give them to Puka because Puka's most mobile. Actually, I have mm -hmm. to walk on walls now, I suppose. So I guess good morning. We we all have anti gravity or our strange uh, walking abilities now. Oh yeah, yes. true. <laughs> and some can fly, you know. I, yeah. I, guess I say the extra one should go to Chris's in that case. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'll take the extra, so I get two extra. Cool. Sure. And what kind of what kind of mark kinda... two hearing serums of healing? And I mm. still have a mark one one. So yeah, we got, we got some left over from last time too. We, we don't use these. We should use these. We should really I use these. I think the fact that we're being given so many might say something about, or the yeah. fact we didn't use in the previous yeah. time got so messed up. Anyway, adding. I, yep. I still have the two Mark Three ones we got from the very, very beginning. Ooh. I mean, we've, we've been, we've been, we've been handling combat well. I'd like to say mm. we, we haven't had so. to. Pretty well, pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Except for that one that we. <laughs> the one we got uh, yeah. yeah. We didn't talk about all that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> who's who's our pilot? Uh, oh, let's right. open up pilot. that sheet. Was 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 Puka pilot? I thought she was. I think it was Alistair. Who has the best mm. piloting skill? I think it was uh, plus nine piloting. I remember doing. I remember doing it last time for the space battle. Oh, I only it. got plus six. So go I only on. got plus four. Alistair. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think you're the pilot. <laughs> Would you like to travel through real space or drift space? Drift is going to take two days off of your travel, but it's a you're, you're going through a different plane of existence. I mean, you've got to get there fast. It's got to be drift space, surely. Hey, um, <laughs> please roll a 1d6. Oh, God. Uh, that's a two. 
Okay, so it will take two days for us to get to Triaxis. Mm. The red brown Pegasus. No, we're the Drake. The, the silver. The yes. silver, yes. silver Drake takes off. I, I totally imagine Alice is complaining that flying the Pegasus was like two or three missions. Like this is a completely different like lumber system. It's like, I liked my old chair. Why am I in this one? Um, <laughs> like constantly like adjusting the levers and trying to get comfortable. I mean, if you don't like the chair, I could take it, but I don't know what I'm doing and I might crash and blow us off the smithereens and then there won't be any part of our, us left for our families to claim or anything. Yes, I think I'll, I'll, I'll cope. Okay. Such a smart decision. Bye. <laughs> With enough space from the from Absalom Station, the spaceship starship stops, and about a minute later, it just winks out of existence and into the drift. Oh. The main way that you can tell the difference between space and the drift is that the drift, while very much looking like space, um, is actually more purpley. Has this like these. Very much like I would say Inez's background, mm. that line of purple going through your your backdrop. <laughs> Let's um, be of service. Hold on, I'll get out of the way. Hold on, hold on. Wait. Very, very. I've lived in the drift. Yeah, there you go. Fuck the fucking my chair's in the way. There, look at that. Ain't that crazy? That's so cool. We in drift travel. It is also very common to, not actually. I shouldn't say very common. It is possible to encounter chunks of other planes that have been pulled into the drift by activating your engine. They say every time you activate the drift engine, a piece of reality from somewhere else enters the drift. But for why, we don't know. That Not sounds yet. scary. <laughs> so, so scary. And That's daring travel. Is there well, anything? It was, it was given to us by God, so I'm assuming <laughs> that it's, uh, it's probably all right. Yeah, I mean, mm. tri uh, uh, Triune the, the deity that gave everyone drift engines. Um, I don't know what their, who knows what their reasonings are. What do you do over these two days? Is it just hanging out? The chatting? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think like, like great, great the kind of guy who likes to like, he's constantly like, He's that, what's that meme? He's that meme, like you're wandering through the room and be like, yeah, are you winning something? But he's just like, <laughs> how's, it go? how's it going? You're, you're, what are you up to there? Oh my God. Like, anybody's so room, funny. like you're walking on Alistair and be like, knock, knock. And then just walk in anyway. <laughs> but, uh, that's so stupid, it's so dead. <laughs> it's so yeah. bad. Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, what are you up to there, Alistair? Just watching the console, I guess, and like he—he he is watching like the, the flight console, like constantly paranoid. That the second he looks away, like so he sort of appear in front of him and just slam straight into it. But um, he's also holding a communicator, kind of like rereading messages um, that he's been sending and receiving back. Um, probably for the first time, he's not holding a data pad full of like university mark, you know, thing like that. Um, yeah, I just love flicking through. Oh, you know, just stuff. Stuff, eh? Yeah, move mm -hmm. on. And, and yeah, just, 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 you know, looking out and other things, trying to put the communicator away. So how is uh, stuff going? Like he's, he's obviously he's grinning like he knows <laughs> Alice is not good at hiding things and Grant's been around so he's like how's uh how are things going with stuff and things and stuff and things is going good really? confusing still trying to figure out what it all what stuff means um but there's definitely a lot of stuff and I like stuff okay I feel like we just got to say Percy. And, Otherwise, we're calling Percy stuff, and that feels. And, oh, and, um, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, right. It's it's Percy, okay. Yeah. No, that's, that's fine. Hey, man, <laughs> and he, take, he like rubs his shoulder. <laughs> mate, look, I'm happy for you, honestly. I hope it's going well, really. If you need any advice or anything, I've been around a bit. I thank you. 
I, I, I guess I, I should be okay. I seem to be. Percy seems to like me for me, which is new. Um, most people tend to get a bit bored of hearing me complain or panic or both. Um, but Percy seems okay with that. I yeah. kind of feel more relaxed now. Or maybe it's the massage. I, I don't quite know. Well, I'm glad you found something that makes you happy. It's important in this world. Well, it's short, after all. It's, uh... Yeah, I'm glad for you, after. Honestly, keep your chin up. And, uh, look, I know... Maybe he doesn't send you more than one waistcoat sometime. I mean, he does... He does. He runs a clothes shop, right? I mean, he does. and But this one's kind of... I don't know. Feels special. Yeah. It also cost me an awful lot of money, so I'm definitely getting my money's worth out of this. Yeah, no, I do understand that. It's very <laughs> nice looking, but you've got to take it off every now and then and wash it. Oh, no, I do wash it. It's just... And iron it. I just I see no one does the <laughs> ironing apart from me, and it's getting... Look, no offence. I mean, it's you... just getting a little bit... I don't even mind the ironing. I get to watch the TV while I'm doing it. It's just, you know, there's so many wrinkles in there now. Have you seen me operate an iron? I can operate complex machinery and computers, but an iron, that thing is evil. Christ, it's, 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 uh, not Christ, it's Christ. Um, whatever the <laughs> stars, it's you and you and Puka, bloody hell. All right, just look when you're done with it, send it to me and the wash. I'll I'll give an iron and uh, you know, bit of the old bit of the old clean up. Thank you. And just see how it spins around on the chair, kind of like half Puka style. Um, yeah, he's, he's <laughs> gonna get up and, and uh, wander out. He's just happy that it's just in a, in a good place. Oh. That he is. Anything else going on in the ship? Yes. <laughs> Would you like to go first, Hooker, or do you want me to go first? Um, uh, mine is fluff. I feel I had a bit of fluff, so it's a. I also have a little bit of fluff, so. Um, I think throughout this the ship, um, echoing, um. You can you can hear Krizith whistling as she does quite a lot of the time. Um, she seems to be whistling a, quite a melancholic tune, um, and um, she's almost obsessively polishing her breastplate. Um, like she's making sure that it is spotless. Maybe even, like, buffing it to make sure it's, like, extra shiny and it looks very, very good. Um, but she does intentionally, like, leave some scratches so that it looks, like, a little bit battle-worn, you know? Like, she does want to come across a little bit, um, a little bit, a little bit battle-ready, you know? Um, so, yeah. I think that's what she's doing the most. She's just polishing that plate real hard. Hey. And absentmindedly listening. I think from uh, whatever room Puka is in or wherever she frequents, it'd be like a lot of loud music, a lot of percussive, happy K pop kind of music. Mm familiar music that uh, pe viewers of this stream may or may not be familiar with from previous uh, short stories. <laughs> uh, you hear Puka probably banging it around, you hear like, ow! 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 <laughs> and after a couple of hours, uh, she would knock on Chris's door. Oh, shit, okay. Uh, uh, the whistling would stop immediately. And then Chris would get up and go to the door and, and expect Graylin, so she's looking up but then or well she's looking a little higher than normal but then oh hi hi are you busy <laughs> not necessarily what's going on well we have some time time till we get to uh triaxis and and uh, i was kind of working hard and getting into that sort of a martial uh mindset and I was doing some training and it wasn't going really well. And I was wondering, you want to spar? 
<laughs> I would love to. Okay. Yes. Sure. Let me put on my armor because you're gonna be my ass, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, she. Out of respect, I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she turns around and gets the gets the armor. You see, it's been very well polished, and she straps it on, and she shakes out the cape a little bit, and then she nods and goes, "Lead the way." Where's the nice? Is there a nice open space? It's like a hollow deck trading. <laughs> I bet. Well, this is the new ship, right? So it's pretty big. Mm -hmm. The Drake, yes. Yeah. It's the console. Mm -hmm. Drake is a little bigger, right? Mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't have it, the only thing it has for its expansion bays. But whereas the Pegasus had um, a science lab and a tech workshop, the Drake, most of its space, I think, has more. It looks like the same weaponry. Um, it looks like its expansion bays are just a cargo hold with escape pods. We can go to the cargo hold and with Chris's help move crates off. To our yes, room. absolutely. I'll move everything to the walls. And then I, 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 well, first of all, I go, I look at Puka, I go, well, first of all, on Triaxis, we give each other a proper warrior's greeting. I'll do that. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, lower is better. Lower is better and a little bit more breath in there. <gasps> Too much breath. I work on it. <laughs> Got it. Um, and then we get into our stands. Yes. Mm. I I'll take a couple steps back, and uh. Glowy crawls down Puka's arm and envelops her one of her elbows to hands down. Roll initiative, girl. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, <I> oh. <laughs> we're actually we're fighting. Oh shit! Non lethal damage. No, you're fine. Right. You're, you're but right. we're go why not? If if, if there's time, yeah. if the GM says there's time a little bit for it, we can Do keep we it short. Roll initiative to see who gets the drop. Sure. 19 from Puka. Initiative? Hold on. Where's my initiative? Bitch. Top of, if you're in play, it's the bright. Oh, you're right. Column. I got a two. Uh, <laughs> you definitely get the drop on me. Okay, let's do, let's try and sum it up in like two or three rolls. Absolutely. Um, so because Puka got the drop, Puka, I'll give you a plus two bonus on whatever you choose to do. Ooh. Ooh. Cool. I'm just going to like give my bow, walk back. With one of my other arms, I say, look over there. And I'm going to fire <laughs> off to uh to uh to two solar flares. Ooh. I'm gonna roll twice. <laughs> uh, bad rolls. Um, plus two, plus two goes to both of them, or yep, yep. okay, okay, mathing, mathing, mathing. Uh, nine, plus six, fifteen is not gonna hit, but maybe a well, twenty six hit. And that's on KAC or EAC? What is that on Greek? EAC because it's cold damage. Got it. So that definitely hits. So I'm going to like aim one for like right for your shoulder. Mm. And you'll notice that there's pressure, but it's not hurting. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. for, for flavor, it's non-lethal, but it's definitely like you feel it. Mm. Yes, and so it bounces. And so she um, she kind of goes with it um, and then tries to attack back. Go for it. Um, which is very loud. And so everyone <laughs> in the in the ship can hear her go. <laughs> <laughs> um and she's going to try and uh punch you i guess uh, she wouldn't have her gloves on for this you could if you want she this, wouldn't besides all that first damage is going into stamina which is super easily healed oh back. for a night ref refreshed it basically yes. yeah. you're right so um you're not damaging each other you're just wind winding one another you're right. However, I think that, that Grizzith is 
very, very careful with this tiny little being that is, <laughs> that is wanting to far with Many people have underestimated Puka in the past. Say, and, and yeah. You're hard. absolutely right. And yep. so I think I think that, that I might be doing that here. That's okay. <laughs> um, is it though? Um, I think it, I think <laughs> I think it is. I think it's okay that that Chris underestimates you a little bit. Um, let's see. Um, it's an unarmed strike then. Mm -hmm. If we were doing damage, that would have been eleven cold damage to you. All right. Um, unarmed strike. Here we go. Oh, uh, how about a twenty-five on KAC? Yes. That would hit. Okay. What kind that, of damage? Well, that's one d three plus seven non-lethal. It says here because what? it's non-lethal. Probably bludgeoning. Sure. Yeah, bludgeoning and not lethal. One d three. Yeah, I'm just roll it in a in roll twenty. Oh my goodness! I don't have roll twenty over it. Hey Siri, <laughs> roll it one d three, bitch. What? Can Google do that? Hold on. I I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll type it for you. Please. It's a three in roll twenty. Wow, amazing! <laughs> I don't have the roll twenty open. God. Pl plus what? Plus seven. Ten. So ten. Ten okay. bludgeoning non lethal. Almost yep. like punch for punch at this point. Yeah. Um, let's do one more uh, attack roll from both of you at the same okay. time, please. At the oh. same time. Ooh. I'll do the one with the frog. <laughs> Anime style, like fists yeah. punching each other. Fists colliding. <laughs> the two, the two really. colliding. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Anime fists. I'm going to just kind of like run up a wall and shoot off with my uh short with one of my uh with a prosthetic laser. Okay. Two shots. Amazing. That's way better. Um the plus two was only the first time, so not the second time. Right. Math. <laughs> 19 probably does not hit, we said. And 19 EAC, on though. EAC does hit. Okay. Ooh. So hit one hit. And I rolled a 17 on the other one, and that's going to be a 23. Yes, hit. both hit. All right. Ooh. And I, on my unarmed strike, rolled a 28. That's going to hit. Roll damage okay. just, just to calculate, see what happens. Mm, We're 20. at 10, 11. I'm going to roll another D3 for you. Please. All right, <laughs> this one's for you. That's a two. All right, plus, plus seven. That's a nine. All right. It takes nine damage, and Christmas would take on two hits, one uh, d three plus three on each of them. Yes. One d three plus three. Oh, bad roll. Total eight fire damage. Eight fire damage and eleven cold before, right? So nineteen in total to my stamina. So you've both done nineteen points <laughs> of damage. Wow. <laughs> that is amazing. Wow. Okay, how do we how does this end in a draw? Um I think because you like jumped off the wall and were like shooting <clears throat> down at me, I think it's Krizith who has used her wings to like fly like underneath you. Um and I think I think you just like land on top of me and then I I'm just I think <laughs> I think Chris is just like, whoa, 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 whoa. I go I for my I ultimate can... attack. <laughs> <laughs> and I put two fingers opposite your rib cage for the tickle. Oh, no. <laughs> no. That would be a very long arm spin. One of, fair, one of my arms would just go like <laughs> jab to the side of your ribs for a tickle. Uh -huh. And do you would... yield, warrior Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I yield, I yield, I do, I do. <laughs> you would uh, not have to yield if you had thrown your punches a bit more seriously, which is something I learned about dragging can that's important to do too. You're absolutely right. Mm. You are right. But I, I lost my fighting spirit a little bit. <laughs> no, I learned more about you actually. That you're a very good friend and uh, you're challenging yourself to think beyond what you've learned for so much and you think first about your friends and I'm challenging you to do some things a bit contrary and you balance the two. I guess you're right. Puka will uh, kind of hop back. Thank you. 
<laughs> she stands up and she goes, oh. That's, uh, I think, I think that leaves Krizith with a lot to think about. Um, about how she's changed since she's been away from the tracks. So we sideswipe the camera and we can see the silvered drake uh, flying down onto this uh, white blue planet. Um, as we zoom in towards near the equator, we can see the Kumo starport. Uh, surface vessels are sailing up uh, the river that Kumo sits upon and out into the Sephorian Sea while starship tra traffic regularly launches from the docks. We can see a labyrinthine market twisting in knots around the center of town with bustling, eager crowds. Um, uh, as we kind of zoom in, we can see the, the crew now walking amongst the streets, and we see unassuming doorways opening to those in the know, concealing businesses offering all manner of illicit goods and services. Skyfire Legionnaires are a frequent sight, ry mostly Rhyphorians and Dragonkin, typically bonded pairs, who are walking around, gathering for deployment, or bartering at the markets while off-duty. Um, sky bridges and landing perches for dragons and Dragonkin are common, as the open market also ascends terraces to building rooftops about five stories above the street, so this is a dragon city. It is not long before our Starfinders approach the top of a notable hill at the edge of Kumo, where we can see the White Sands Lodge curling around the top of the hill like a skeletal worm clutching a diamond. Oh. A series of freshly renovated structures form a half circle around a grown crystal dome enclosure. The outer buildings crawl with communications equipment, humming power coils, and steaming computer cooling systems. And you can we can also see through the crystal dome, crystal dome, um, uh, which holds a biome from another world, a multi-tiered summer oasis in the midst of the chill, Triaxian winter. Oh. Um, as you, the four of you, walk in, lodge maintenance staff. Uh, sort of like see you all, welcome you into the, 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 the lodge and tell you that the dome is where Zephaldrin awaits. Hmm. And as you walk into this, this tropical biosphere, biome essentially, we can see that at the top of the dome on a perch sits a young adult brass dragon. Oh. Uh, huge if you're wondering about sizes. So, <laughs> a one size category bigger than Krizith. Damn. Um, he is... I don't know if he's, like, wearing robes. I feel like that... Oh, dragon... wait. Sorry, this is, this is a dragon, not a dragon king, Yes, right? this is a right. dragon. Okay, so this is an actual dragon dragon. Dragon dragons. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if he's, like, wearing robes or, or clothes or... Mm. They probably have something like something draped around their neck, like some kind of like just general ceremony. I feel so. Uh, yeah. They definitely have on one of their horns a uh, communicator, like coming down over here. And then we can see hanging from the same horn is the Starfinder like symbol. Mm. Oh, nice. Um, and he flies down. Hello, welcome. Ah, it's so wonderful to see you, and I'm so glad you made such great time. The opening ceremony is today, and I, I was worried if you would make it through the drifts quick enough. Oh, my manners. I am Zephaldrin. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having us. This is such a lovely place, and and it's really cool to 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 meet uh, friends of uh, Nazai. Yeah, Nayaj and I go, Nayaj, go way, way back. Um, but I, you know, enough about me. What about you? You've been doing so much for the society lately. Some grand adventures, no? I'm sorry. I'm just going to... Can I just roll an insight? Because, like, this guy's friend with... Uh, with um, Nayaj. Um, Nayaj. 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 This, this peppy dude is friend with Nayaj? <laughs> yeah. 
Like, yeah. Kratos is looking going, I don't understand how this works. <laughs> she, um, they're, the the they're the wallflower, and they're the, you know, the you know what? Yeah, I bet, water. Yeah, they, like, they like adopted a wallflower. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> when an extrovert adopts a wallflower, yeah, that's probably exactly what happened. That's <laughs> so true. I had that in high school. I was the wallflower, and I had this absolutely extroverted person who was like, you're mine now. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, crazy. <clears throat> Yep. Actually, you know what? Um, because Bray and Chris have like a telepathic link now, so yes. I guess Chris was like probably just like say I'm going for it. that makes a lot of sense actually. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, um <laughs> Chris does not seem to be responding as she is saluting. <laughs> oh, right. Yes. Um, I also salute when in Rome. <laughs> Please, there's no need for saluting. I'm, I'm no venture captain. and In fact, uh, honestly, I think you might rank higher than me in the society at this point. Oh, well. That's I, easy. Chris goes, this is not about the society. Oh, uh, yes. Iaxian tradition. Um, and he, he makes a face. Sorry, I wasn't born here. I grew up on Akaton. <laughs> <laughs> then I totally understand your confusion. <laughs> um. Anyway, there's still a lot to do. Um, a lot of half-finished stuff for the opening gala. Um, I prepared some material on our guests and current events to help you. And he gestures towards like a pile of data pads, just like sitting on a table. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll keep working on things and, and let you let you work on that. Uh, cool. Uh, and he takes off and like flits like a giant sized hummingbird from place to place <laughs> in the dome. Insane. <laughs> that that's so insane to me. Um, does does he they he he him he does he have wings that he fl flutters around? With? Yeah, he's a dragon. Okay, a I right I don't know. I don't know if maybe the dragons here would have like an innate sense of ability to fly or something, but I no, guess no, no, uh, pretty sure. All right, fly. <laughs> so yeah, we we are getting blown around. That's for sure. Chris, um, I would say, as you're kind of watching him, you get the sense um, dragons do traditionally. I don't know about traditionally, but in lore, have a tendency to hoard. Um, and you can like take a look around and see, ah, uh, ha, ha, like there's, there's the horde. <laughs> there's data pads, computers, consoles, bookshelves, picture yes. frames, TVs. But, but also the place itself. The, the like... place itself. But you get the sense that he hoards data, experiences, and relationships. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I think that's fun. Um, so he said to just go ahead and go like like do something with these data pads. Yeah, just have a look and like see what the the uh, mm. the spec is. <laughs> All right. So I guess I pick one up. I can't read this. If I do it, I'm going to do it wrong. <laughs> the... Not this time, Puka. <laughs> <laughs> nice you try. Gotta, you gotta do your research sometimes. I keep telling you this. I spent all my time researching Triaxis, and I've been spending all this time now modeling this fantastic cape. And thank you so much for the extra starch, because it always looks like it's like flat. It always looks like it's billowing a bit. <laughs> Did a really good job with that. Yeah, no, I was I was going for for the look. You still have to do your research though. Here, I, he like pushes the data pad out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a good mm. point. Um, I also hand out uh, capes to everyone else as well. They are all modular. You can change them however you want. But uh, nice. yeah, we've all got, we've all got um, crew capes, Starfinder and crew nice. capes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because Christmas has that little elbow cape, which it it mm. is ceremonial, but it doesn't look as cool. <laughs> so. I see documents being added in roll twenty, <laughs> and I oh. hoard I hoard notes, so I have to open these things. <laughs> I've put. Yeah. Four documents. Mm -hmm. There's the original mission, mission briefing from Venture Captain Nayaj, and then the four documents in Roll20. Um, three about specific people that are coming to the gala, and then one more about sort of more general Triaxian notable. Um, is there anywhere we want to start? I, uh, um, go ahead, go ahead. 
I mean, I think we'll, we'll we should start with the people who could go to the gala. I think, and then see if we can see about the tracks. And I mean, Chrysus would gravitate towards the tracks and nobles of notable notables, of course. But like, I think the rest might be more interested in who's at the gala. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, Gray would be would want to you know who we're dealing with and would look out for that kind of thing. So he would look at the the general Ghana list. There are three three people that Zephaldrin has highlighted um, as people to pay attention to during the gala. Um, they are all representatives of various organizations. So uh, first and mm. foremost, we we have. Tafarian Mel, who mm. is a Rhyforian, uh, he, him, on the Kumo City Council. Uh, so definitely pulls some strings. Zephaldrin notes he's been asking questions about the society and spying on lodge staff when they're in the city. Oh. Um, I suspect he's behind three of the five communication taps I've, I've discovered. Oh, wow. Uh, mm. Dragons Damn. be dragoning. I guess so. Uh, uh, although espionage is the same on every planet. Mm. You're right. You're right about this. Carries a paper notebook. That's very. Sorry. Oh, maybe maybe Alistair should talk. Oh uh, yeah, no, he's, he's mm. Alistair's How an enemy. Enemy. <laughs> No, but like, but, but Alistair broke through to someone like that. That's what I mean. All right. Uh, uh, I suppose if you can keep your disdain of paper down to a minimum, we should be all right. I'll try Just my best. Opposites sometimes get along swimmingly. <laughs> we so, uh, did see a sometimes. Thing last time. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, yes. After that, we uh. have Jaxter Brightbeam, a fey child gnome with bright mm. green hair styled in an onion bun. Love that. Mm. Um, is affiliated with Skyward Imports and the immortal suzerainty of Ning. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a dragon kingdom. Mm. I feel like it. At All the right. Um, is that, is that Ning? Of Ning. Ning. Immortal yeah. suzerainty of Ning. I feel, like that, Ning okay. I feel like that deserves a Google. <laughs> can, you spell, can you spell that? Suzerainty. S-U-Z-E-R-A-I-N-T-Y mm -hmm. of Ning. N I N G Ning. Gotcha. Oh, are they a? It's some place on Triaxis. It's definitely a nation on Triaxis. Mm. Uh, okay, cool. The um, D -D -D -D, the Feldrin notes that Jaxter has seemed particularly interested when mm -hmm. he mentioned some items were brought back from out-of-system missions, which, oh. as an import company, you know, is a... Mm. That's not, yeah. But also, what's going on there? Why, <laughs> why are you interested in those, <laughs> those things? What do they normally import? Do we know that? Like, Skyward Imports? Mm, no. But ask. Do I know that? <laughs> <laughs> Aha, Ning is a continent on uh, oh, Triaxis. Right. Who, uh, the king of Ning. Ha! <laughs> the king of Ning? That's good. The Ning king? king? That's pretty good. The Ning king. Um, <laughs> refuses to acknowledge the Pact World's authority. <gasps> Ooh. Um, mm. uh, but has embraced modernization, making it a haven for corporations, criminals, and all others that seek to avoid Pact control. Far from being a lawless society, however, Ning is obsessed with honor and status. Traits that attract oh. a fair number of Kasatha and Vesk immigrants. This might be this might be a person for me to talk to. <laughs> God Ning, damn it. Yeah. Ning is best known for the Ukara or battle flowers, lithe, genderless warriors, often Solarians, who compete in broadcasted ritual combat in exchange for system wide celebrity. Wow. That's pretty cool. That is yeah. really cool. Can That's I right. sign up for that? <laughs> <laughs> I feel no. like <laughs> asks Puka the Solarian. Wait, are they yeah, are they are they genderless warriors or are they like a, all the they're like various genders of warriors? It says live genderless warriors. 
So you have to give up your gender. Program. Oh, like that? I thought it was like an invitational. Then I'd like, then I'd like to watch and cheer them on and learn from Reject them. Reject gender, embrace dancing, okay. and and combat. Yeah, and, and combat. combat. Embrace well, fighting with gender. But that doesn't gender. have gender. <laughs> I feel like you can't tell underneath all the fur. Jesus pats herself down. <laughs> I'm sure that another skitamander could tell. <laughs> or best, because they're, they're used to skitamanders. Yeah, but we gotta get close to smell. It's mostly smell. It's great. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I'm making it up. <laughs> <laughs> There's Ida. And Aralax is the last one. Commander Aralax, a, a oh, commander God. in the Skyfire Legion. Um, she's a silver scaled dragonkin. Uh, Zafeldrin notes, responsible for the Parapet Mountain Ruins, which we know the society is interested in, thanks to Puka's amazing gather information <laughs> check, early, and seems particularly interested in reclaiming Dragon Legion history. Hmm. Interesting. Commander Aralix. That is her. Aralix, yes. Aralix. Aralix? Aralix. Aralix. Yes. Um... Do I know this person? Skyfire Legion Commander? The Skyfire Legion is vast with lots of people. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think I've. We may not have interacted like um, like one to one. However, I might have heard of her in the garrisons? Question mark? But it's possible. I mean, if it's you possible. keep track of the Skyfire Legion and their goings on mm. for sure, you know, but uh it's a it's a big mercenary company. Yeah. Um commanders come and go. Yes. Yeah, I mean it's all possible. And yeah. who knows what all the right. conversation might be. Mm. You're right. And then we have the last bit of notes on Tri Triaxian notables. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um Zafeldrin uh um sent out invitations to the Serozanaxia delegation. They are, uh, he notes that the delegation reports they received the six invitations that he sent, but cannot attend. At least they are RSVP'd in the negative. Um, but he plans on leaving these invitations active and sending a gift because Serozanaxia could be the best ally available in the Drake land. Serozanaxia? Serozanaxia. Sarah's Nixia. Yeah. yeah. So, it's with a Y, no? Sarah's a Nixia? The Nixia? I think Van so. And Nixia. Yes, thank yes. you. Thank you. Mm. Um, speaking of dragons, the Feldron's last bit of notes is on recent Dragon Core activity, so oh. the Dragon Corporations. He met with the ambassador from Drechniliax. Oh, Love it. Love that. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let you guys do the, uh, do the um, notes. I'm gonna stop trying to do Yeah, notes. pardon my draconic, everyone. I, I, yep, I'm yeah, but this rusty. is really, but this is really spicy because mm -hmm. it says further here that while they were meeting officers at an interesting opportunity for access to cybernetics, that the the, the author spent like six hours removing malware from the computer systems after the visit, and it said that frozen trove mm -hmm. in the no frozen mm. trove showed mm. interest in attending. And, and and I look at Alistair reading this. The signal bounced from an automated freighter in low orbit and they couldn't confirm authenticity. Uh, request denied. Uh, uh, Kelvesriax, a fire, a flare tech offered the sale of maps to a gateway to the elemental plane of fire in the Caldera Basin. High risk, low chance of success. Suitable for agents who are bored and have a certain death wish. These frozen <laughs> trove assholes. I do love that you already I... noticed of the uh, of the specs when they're they're spicy gossip. And... Yada yada yada. yada. <laughs> so bugs, malware, and what possibly could be a frozen trove ship in low orbit, which is kind of what uh, Tefarian Mel was kind of mm. into, because yeah. uh, the, 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 it might have been behind the uh, the taps. Hmm. Is there a communications center in this lodge? Yes, definitely. Um, I think Alistair will kind of just sort of go, okay, um, there's a lot of digital stuff going on here. So 
while you guys go get ready for the talky bit that you do, um, I need to go and do a sweep of the system. Our crew has finished getting ready for the gala. Alistair, your <laughs> perusal of the system. Um, I would say Zephaldrin did a really good job at removing any malware mm. um, and, and bugs or taps that were in the system. You find no yeah. evidence. Awesome. Is there a comms tower here? Uh, yes, I think the... The mm. exterior buildings are loaded with communication equipment. Awesome. I like to go find the biggest the biggest broadcasting one I can find. Um, I would like to take out the signal jammer I used last time and affix it and wire it into one of the towers um, and then have my little AI in my head interface with it so that if I need to... Potentially, I could cause a signal blackout and stop any messages from going in and out, or at least attempt to intercept messages going in and out of the uh, facility. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> wow. Okay. I think that's so smart. That is able to work. Brilliant. When uh, signal jammers, when activated, interrupt. Uh, interrupt broadcast signals within four miles. Cool, great. <laughs> if attached to a larger broadcasting station, <laughs> such as those found aboard a starship or a Starfinder Society Lodge, the range increases to 12 miles. It's not a strong one. It is a level one one. I didn't upgrade it from the last time we had it, but they'd have to pass a DC well, 16 still... check. Exactly. Okay. Mm. Good to know. Totally hmm. not revealing my hand here. But, <laughs> but even anyway. if they pass it, would it still be detected, if not blocked, I wonder? It's to bypass or locate a signal jammer. Mm. So they do they can bypass it if they roll a computers or engineering check. Mm. Meaning that Alistair wouldn't mm. know it's in bypassed. No. No. Okay. No. All right. no. But you can when you when you want to, Alistair. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Activate, activate it, and oh my God, it's so smart. Um, and interrupt wireless si signal. You have to pick radio <clears throat> or wireless or one specific broadcasting medium. Wow, I think um, it's probably going to be radio. It's probably going to be the radio communications, so that no one can use like communicators in or out. Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay so like wireless devices mm -hmm. inside the area will still yeah. operate. There's no radio mm -hmm. or communication. Yeah. Cut it. More specifically, anything anything from a low-orbiting transport that may be trying to send messages down to the facility will now have to go through an extra layer of trouble. Okay. Is it, does anyone else is doing something pre-event? Um, I'm reading up as much as I can on, <laughs> on these people. Got it. That are yeah. coming. I, I would imagine that Puka, Chris, and I don't know about Gray, but at least like we're pouring over like these data pads with like. Yeah, Gray, Gray would be as well. Like research is important for um, preparation. Yes. Derosanixia. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to spell that properly. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Drechiniliax. <laughs> The gala is beginning um, around midday. So we, let's say we got here for like early morning. Mm -hmm. um, guests begin to arrive. Banners welcoming them hang suspended from flying drones around the dome. While holographic displays run continuous loops of video showcasing the Starfinder Society's recent public accomplishments and discoveries. We see some brand new Starfinders on Akaton um, taking down a thief who stole an ancient relic from the Starfinder Society. We see some middling uh, Starfinders who attended the recent uh, Star Sugar Heart Love concert at Songbird Station um, and preventing a, an enemy attack there as well. And then on top of that, we see your four smiling faces being flashed on these screens occasionally as 
the second seekers the best and brightest examples of starfinders that there are at the hmm. moment i think alistair is seeing that bit kind of grabs his tie a little bit and kind of like pushes it up and like like kind of being a bit smug with himself the feldron um comes down with you and um as he as, as he's sort of like prowling next to you i mean just like mm. way up here um oh i've been telling everyone in kumo about all the amazing discoveries that the starfinders have been making lately uh, i might have set their expectations a little high but that's why i asked for the best and here you are you're <sighs> such a good hype dragon you, you your promo is really great the ambience is really well done thanks <laughs> he puts two claws together no <laughs> In, uh, so if you can, um, I just need you to make a good impression with some of these power brokers so that they'll give us a shot. I know that once we have their buy-in, we'll, we'll have lots of cool stuff for the Starfinder Society to do here on Triaxis. And, you know, once they see agents like you in action, they'll be clamoring for our help. I believe in the cause. We believe in the cause, right, team? Yes. Of course. Great. Um, and with that, he sort of like takes off to go mm -hmm. and, and do the gala. So um, we will take it in turns. You do mm -hmm. not have to all act together. Um, you can do separate things. If you want, you can talk to notables or you can perform security, which if you do remember, Nyaj said, as you mm -hmm. know, as much as the Feldrin wants you to impress the power brokers, Venture Captain Naya just said security is her utmost priority. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So we're going to go in the... Well, I'll just say, who wants to go first? Um, Gray's going to take, gonna take security. He would say, like, look, guys, I'm not really one for these uh, fancy dudes. If it's all right with you, I'm probably <laughs> just going to keep an eye on things. Mm. All right. Okay, Gray Lance. Are you making a perception check to patrol, or are you monitoring? Are you checking? Like, what's what's your your plan of action? So he's gonna be just like kind of walking around and just like like keeping his eyes on things. Like he's not gonna stand in the corner or something. But he'll be walking around. He's a big people watcher for this kind of thing. See who looks like they might be uh, important or worth keeping an eye on and such. So yeah, it's just a, probably a general perception for him. Actually, if, you want... if you're looking at people, I would ask for a sense motive. Sure, yeah. I hate that for me, but okay. <laughs> oh, damn. 23. All right. Ooh. 23. Yeah. All okay. your deepest desires are known to us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're looking around, perusing, examining. You spot a nervous looking Rhyphorian woman. She um, is wearing like a simple uh, dark jumpsuit, you know, a little formal jumpsuit um, with blue fur. I'm marking her as a winterborn Rhyphorian. Rhyphorians um, uh, have different uh, traits and attributes depending on what season they were born in. Oh, nice. Tri -axis. Um, although with modern day uh, science, People switch all the time just for, no. uh, yeah. like, aesthetic purposes. Um, it was just sort of, like, standing near a table looking very nervous. Um, does she seem, uh, like, what kind of, like, are we doing, like, older, younger, kind of build? She's on the younger side. Do they seem like a fighter from looking at them? <sighs> no. You get the sense they are more of a... Flyer person. Right, got it. Okay, I'm then going to just sidle up uh, with some cheese on a stick and um, say, not real good at these uh, fancy dudes either, eh? Um, no, uh, <laughs> uh, trying to um, enjoy the party. <laughs> mm, yeah, no, I understand that. Cheese on a stick? 
Uh, no thanks, I'm lactose. Well, for me. <laughs> um, she kind of like nods to you and like steps away, and you see you see her like walk away, look back to like look at you, and then when she sees that you're like still looking, she kind of starts walking a little hurriedly. Yeah. <laughs> um. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna like actively follow her, but I'm gonna like continue <laughs> to mingle around the party, just taking an arc around that direction. And also, I'll keep my eye on, like, on everything else as well, but keeping her within peripheral view. Okay. Okay. Great. Who's next? Um, if all the people have arrived, I think... I mean, since security is our first priority, Chrysith would like to do some security for sure, but she does want to talk to some people as well. Um, especially to what was their name again? Parallax, ja Jaxter for oh Jaxter, yeah, was the one that was interested in the out of system missions. Yes, I think before he went, um, mm. Ray would have would have mentioned like, look, if anything comes up, I'll let you know via you know the com. Mm. Oh yes, and then you let the others know. But for now, I'm just not going to these parties. Plus, the <laughs> cheese on sticks. Yes. <laughs> Okay, um, Krizuf. Yes. You want to go talk to Jackster? Is, is anyone Sorry. going uh, with? Does anyone else want to speak with Jackster? I should say. I mean, Puka would want to speak with everyone, but she'll also let people take lead if they want to. If there's a single person not being talked mm. to, Puka will focus on them. Okay. But if 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 someone feels they need backup, drag Puka along. But unless you designate Puka, you're on point. She's not going to like overshadow mm. you, mm -hmm. unless you tell her to go. Mm -hmm. I don't think Chrysith would ask for backup here. Noted. Chrysith, you approach Jaxter. He is a gnome uh, with bright green hair in an onion bun. Mm. Um, love that for him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wearing a like probably like a pink blazer with like white lapels. Um, very bright, very colorful. Mm -hmm. And as you approach, he, 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 he's standing on a stool at like a little table with drinks and snacks. And he smiles and his teeth like shine white at you. That I'm is abnormal <laughs> how bright his, those teeth are. Wow. Well, um, hello, madame. <laughs> All right. Chris does not laugh. Um, <laughs> I do. Um, Chris makes a a salute and a tiny mm. bow, um, and um, she goes, "Hello, I, it is nice to see you here, um, Mr. Brightbeam." Oh, you are aware of who I am. What an honor! <laughs> of course, Ford has been traveling around about your great feats and your. The way you, you run your business, of course. Oh, well, flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> I had hoped it would. <laughs> um, she will pick up a drink. We're standing at like some sort of craft table. Mm -hmm. um, so um, she will pick up a drink um, and slowly sip it. And um, she goes how best to approach this oh, hold on how best mm. to approach a conversation <laughs> of why were you interested in these items <laughs> <laughs> um, um due to the briefing i can tell you um uh culture or professional merchant would be a great way to I interact with him if you're trying to impress um, but of course, the social checks are always uh, available. Culture or what? Profession that? merchant, if anyone oh. has that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> I can give you profession professor, but <laughs> nope. I have uh. a lot of I have a lot of intimidating diplomacy. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so we'll we'll do some diplomacy, I think, or we'll focus on that. Okay. Um, she'll start inquiring i think she goes 
So I've, of course, heard a lot about your business and how you run it. However, I've not, I've not had the pleasure of hearing what exactly it is that you import. Oh, well, um, a variety of all different kinds of things. Uh, and he begins like launching into very much a spiel, an elevator pitch. Uh, mm. Good thing we read um, the Triaxian entry of the core rulebook earlier so that I actually know who, what the, who the sort of suzerain of Ning is. <laughs> the um, yeah. He explains that because Ning is a, a continent here that is sort of outside of the Pact Worlds, um, they don't have the same sort of trade access that Triaxis as well as other Pact World planets and moons have to the greater system. Uh, mm -hmm. And so his... Uh, uh, He's very much thinking about the Starfinder. Well, give me a diplomacy check at this point. I'm scared. So his business is primarily in providing uh, the continent of Ning, the, the, the kingdom of the king of Ning and uh, the kingdom um, with sun, various sundries. Cannot get over that he's called the king of Ning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> various sundries. Uh, my diplomacy is a 20. 20. Yes, 20 diplomacy. Okay. Um, yes, I am hoping that, uh, you know, if things work out for the Starfinder Society here in Kumo, that we could be potential business partners. I would hope so, too, of course, as a, as a prevalent <laughs> member of the Starfinder Society. He he nods and smiles, but you get the sense that he's kind of like looking around, seeing who else there is to talk to. Oh, mm. I've left a bad taste. Not bad, me. just not. I'm not okay. I'm a little formal. <laughs> I see how it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see how it is. I don't. I lack color. Introduce him to, to Puka, maybe then. Yeah, then exactly. Yourself. Exactly. Puka, I where? Think, oh, yeah, where? Yeah, I think I'm looking for Puka. Where? Where's Puka at? Puka, I guess, would be striding up to Commander Aralix. Okay. Oh, shit. So let's we'll, we'll <laughs> move the camera over there. Um, oh, and, <laughs> and as Puka uh, clocks Commander Aralix, she's going to just like uh, uh, swallow her cheeks full of food because there's nothing in her mouth, <laughs> and she's going to just have a brief moment where uh, in the middle of that sparring with Krissa, uh where the blows finally started landing between and she's like there was clarity there was composure but there was there wasn't like bloodlust but there was control so we're going to exude some of this energy and Puka will keep these things in mind and stride over to Commander Aralex we see Commander Aralix. She is a bit slighter than Krizuth, but still a large dragonkin person. Um, silver scales, uh, shining quite brightly in the crystal dome light, um, mm. wearing a Skyfire Legion sort of ceremonial armor. Um, mm. And as you approach, she, she, she sees you. She sal salutes and bows. If it please you, Commander, <laughs> uh, please uh, excuse my laughter. I just, I've never seen a Skittermander so composed. Uh, I, I, I think it's kind of uh, unusual too, but I've, I've had the pleasure of making uh, friends and getting acquainted with, with the complexities and the intricacies. And there's a lot to learn from that. That is good to hear. Um, hello, I am Commander Aralix of the Skyfire Legion. Puka, one of the second seekers from the Starfinder Society. I'm well aware of you, the, you and the second seekers' uh, prowess. It's all the word that has been around the lodge as of late. Uh, I think humility is... It, it, I'm still learning. Is is humility something that should be regarded here, or should uh, exploits be like a bit more forward? If you were serving in my squadron, humility would be required. 
Mm. However, mm. there are those in the Legion as well as others around Triaxis who prefer a more loud approach. Measurement, control, uh, nuance. Just, just, just like uh, everything happening on the Parapet Mountains. I, I don't think Dragon can have eyebrows, but she would totally raise an eyebrow <laughs> at that. Ooh. Like she, she has like a ridge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and make me. Yeah, yeah. So we're looking for mysticism, profession, archaeologist, or diplomacy. Or diplomacy. Yeah. <laughs> Any bonuses diplomacy. for saying some hopefully good things? Uh, I will lower the DC. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, that is a 23. Oh. 23. Well, the 13. Just made it. One over. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, you have done your homework. Yes, I am quite interested in the Parapet Mountains. Would the Starfinder Society happen to have any... Archaeologists or mystics, perhaps, that are particularly apt, adept in dealing with curses and haunts? I think there is definite uh, enthusiasm to uh, open up and, and look, who's looking for the right, for the smart words, develop those um, sectors. But uh, enthusiasm, will it, expertise aside, I, I think one thing I've really learned and want to impart is that the gains that are made are not zero sum. Just because just because one party goes in does not mean that someone else loses. Together, everything can be shared and everyone can rise. That is one of the... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That is one of the tenets that the Skyfire Legion holds as well. Why we attempt to hold the peace here on Triaxis. Imagine if the entire planet combined our forces, we would be one of the mightiest uh, for, uh, my, mightiest governments in the Pact World system. Uh, but there are many Triaxians who would prefer a more self-centered route. Uh, I, I, I'm glad you and I are on one mind of that. She's definitely smiling and like will continue conversing <laughs> with you. Nice. Like she nice. seems to be enjoying this conversation. Um, <laughs> and I don't mind if at a certain point I, I, I feel like a tap on my shoulder from uh, my dragon dummy mommy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and we see then at that point we see Chris is kind of like beckoning over to maybe nodding your head to um, uh, yeah. Jackster. But let's go to, before we can do that, let's go to Alistair and see what he's up to. At the um, Alistair is half a ball of anxiety. He, he's mulling things over in his head. He's putting two and two together and getting five at the moment. There's something he can't quite figure out. Um, he's missing a piece of the puzzle in his head. So he's going to go to Zalvendra and Zalv Oh, God. Remind me. Zal. Oh, no, I'm missing. Zal. Yeah. yeah. See? <laughs> that's. Zephaldrin. Zephaldrin. Um, you have to Zephaldrin um, and go, I know we're in party mode right now, but if you've got a minute, I just need 60 seconds of your time. Sure thing, friend. And he, he moves over to a little alcove. Mm. Do you have the logs of when you sense the rejection, the frozen trove? It said it bounced off an automated freighter. Um, I'm, I'm, I might. Uh, why? <laughs> I'm worried that the last time we heard of frozen trove, there were two very powerful people and while I think my comrades are focusing on one of those two people my worry is on the other one and we are sitting in a very complex web of computers and systems 
and I have a hunch, and I just want to see if I can leverage some information out of it. Alistair, I assure you, I've my logs, my my systems are secure. I've cleaned them up. I've secured them. Um, you know, frozen trove aside, uh, it's possible that they just weren't interested in participating. <laughs> I promise that things will probably be okay. 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 Um, if you say so. Um, I have a couple of other things I need to do, so excuse me. Um, I think Alice is going to walk off. Um, trying to figure out what to do, seeing everyone talking, seeing Grey Lance doing security. Um, and be like, it, it, it's like he, he's being paranoid because he knows he's got the switch for the signal jammer, but he needs to be ready. If, if he gets distracted and starts talking, someone could send something. So he's being ultra paranoid, um, about like holding the switch. Um, so I think he, he doesn't want to, but he'd go on security. Um, okay. He'd, I think, rather than doing active security like Grey Lance is doing, I think he'd probably sleuth back to the comms room again um, and just start sitting there and just watching every like inbound and outbound ping from the from the like the facility going in and out, in and out. Make Try and see the effects for me, please. Mm. That's some big brother action going on. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, that is thirty-six. <laughs> um, you're watching everything going on um, and there's a you get an alert mm. a guest ha has like their invitation has been mm -hmm. scanned um, and while the person scanning the invitation didn't realize it you immediately clock it as a forged invitation fantastic I mean, not fantastic that I've... <laughs> that's half of a fantastic I found it. Um, I think Alice is going to immediately go on the comms quietly to the group and go, someone's just entered using a forged invitation. I can't see much. I just know that it's forged. So they're is probably going to be near the entrance. Is there a name? Uh, give me a minute. Uh, is there any indication as to who was registering on it? Um... The image, so the image mm. of the invitation is a forged guest image. So, okay. um, uh, probably they probably took an invitation and placed their own picture mm. over it. Oh, so, right, 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 right. Yes, yeah. I would say the 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 guest in question is a. I don't know. You tell me. Oh, um. Oh my God! It's Percy. <laughs> no. <laughs> what are you was, doing here? It was um, a deep cover sting all along. Stop it. <laughs> it's it's going to be some sort of dragon kin, I'd, I'd okay. imagine. Um, okay. Sort of uh, greeny scaled, I'd imagine. A green male. scaled dragon yeah, green kin. Scaled male dragon dragon kin. kin. Yes. Mm. Um, named Linus. Linus, okay. So I think I'd relay that to everyone on the comms. Go, whoever that person is, they use the forged invitation. Let's go to Puka and Krizuf back over at the Jackster table, um, having just received this notification, but mid-conversation now of playing it up. Um, ah, good, good after, good day to you too, Starfinder, Jackster says. Oh, I, I heard you really liked uh, no, that's, that's not the right word. You liked uh, things from outer <laughs> worlds. You like expanding your horizons. You like uh, experiencing new things via uh, collectibles. I like shinies too. It, shinies are nice, of course, but it's really what my clients are expecting, my customers. Um, they wish to experience the greater solar system and the galaxy without having to leave the comforts of home. <laughs> is it about is it about the item itself or is it about the adventure out to, that that is uh, achieved in getting the item? 
I do believe it's the experience, the understanding, the, um, the, the just sheer newness of it all that excites my customers. There have been so many situations we've been in like that, and even, and I'm, I'm with Chris, I'm, I'm also trying to, like, uh, redeem uh, Chris's, uh, in Jackter's eyes, like, and when we went to uh, Ida inserts a previous adventure of uh, <laughs> other off world that is not coming to mind right now, and we did the cool thing. Yep. We we oh. went we went to um uh, uh an abandoned space station that hadn't been touched in 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 centuries. Mm, the treasures that that place might hold. Art, to found artifacts, and we went to this other uh librarian uh, uh station planet. The librarian that... planet. Imagine the kind of things we could share uh, with, with with the Starfinder Society, uh, willing to a uh, thing. And Chris was there for all of it. Wow! Wow! Uh, go ahead and roll culture or diplomacy. Or culture. The librarian planet. <laughs> oh my god! No. <laughs> I don't know. Well, how cool! That is cock that landed on top of three other dice in the middle of it oh, again. No. Much better. Um, that is six, no, it's an eight. Uh, 28. 28, okay. He is, Jackster is thoroughly impressed. <laughs> <gasps> um, okay. Thank God. Uh, Krizuth and Greylance, you've also received that um, info from Alistair. Yes. Excuse us, Mr. Brightbeam. Um, we should talk, um, the Feldrin has our contact information. I hope we hope to see more of you later. Wonderful. Yes, of course. Uh, I, I look forward to many business opportunities with the Starfinder Society. I think I will. I would still like to try and talk to Commander Alex, but more so. In a way of, I'm still trying to look for this person, this green skilled person. Yeah. But I want to try mm. and do it while I'm having conversation with her. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah, I think so. Awesome. And so maybe, uh, maybe Puka goes back with you. Do you want Puka to go back with you? Um. Yes. However, however, I think Krizith will s signal like, I'll try and do most of the talking. Because otherwise, I can try to be a bit sneaky with the last one, with the t t Teferi and Mel. Oh, you could do that as well. Absolutely. I don't necessarily need you for this. So. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, I will step towards Mother Erelix. I will try and get her attention. And then, of course, I will salute. Give it. Ah, uh, Knight Krizith. That is a title I haven't heard in a long time, Commander. Uh, well, yes, when I heard that one of the Starfinders, one of the best and brightest this evening, was to be a, uh, a, 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 from one of the knightly orders of Priaxius, I simply had to know who you were. Here you are. <laughs> Here I am indeed. It is nice meeting you. You as well. Oh. I'm always proud when uh, a, a Triaxian goes off into the system to make a name for themselves. I myself am proud of the journey I've made so far as well. So I thank you for your recognition. Krizuth, can you make a perception check? Yes. Um, hold on. Where is my sheet? There it is. Perception. Plus six. All right. There we go. Come on. Make it good. That's uh, 12 in total. <laughs> um, you do not see this green scale dragonkin. Damn it. <laughs> because I was going to bring it up in conversation, be very slick about it, while I was like looking around the room being like, is any of your garrison here tonight? Mm. A, a few. 
you, uh, but perhaps uh, another commander or two, but I am here in official representation of the Skyfire Legion. Absolutely, and of course that that is, I see, I see that and I am very, very glad that you are here. Um, do I want to talk to her about, like, I think Puka handled impressing her very, very, very well. Yeah. And so I think I'm just going to be like, I think I was really just here to say hi, hello, and hope and wish you a very, very good rest of your evening, of course. And I hope you, um, I hope you have a lot of fun and um, that our business in the future with the Starfinders may be, how do you say? I actually lost the word. <laughs> um, oh, prosperous. Prosperous. She clasps your hand in a, like a strong but gentle handshake. Mm. Um, it says, a pleasure meeting you. I, I do hope that Zephaldrin will be able to pass on your contact information should we ever have need of the society's services. Of course, I make sure of it. She smiles. I will um, salute again and bow, and then I will turn around and walk as straight as possible. <laughs> um, Alright, Alistair yep. and Greylance. What are you two Ooh. up to? Um, I think first thing I'll do is I'll mention upon getting the information about um, <clears throat> the Green Dragonkin. Mm -hmm. It's just like, say, um, yeah, I'm also tailing a um, my Thorian, Blue Furred. Nothing yet, but I've got a bad feeling. Seems sketchy. Try not to interact, though. We'll see what she does, gets up to. As for this dragonkin, I'll keep my eye out. And I will keep my eye out uh, by <laughs> looking around for them. Okay. Um, do you want to perceive the Gala Dome area? Or do you want to actually like step into, like, out of here and maybe check the buildings? Uh, I'm still watching this this blue Rhyphorian. Um, they seem to be moving around a lot. Or can I tell one of the others to keep an eye out for them? Make a perception check, please. Okie dokie. Are you a bounty hunter? Yeah. Uh, make, make a... You can do... You can use profession bounty hunter if you have it. But I'm going to lower the DC because this is your bread and butter. Sweet. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, I got a 26. You see her stepping away from the gala and like looking over her shoulder to make sure she's not being followed or in, or being noticed. She does not notice that you notice, however. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna actually. Can I can't. All right. Okay. I'll get on comms. I say, um, who go? Yeah. You see, uh, seven o'clock on the right. Blue for you. Yeah, do I? I guess. Yeah, she's got a slick black pantsuit. Slick black pantsuit. <laughs> well, they really wear it well. Yeah, it's pretty form fitting. Anyway, the point is, <laughs> I need you to tell them I can't really get out of here without being spotted. But you can. Still, it's your thing. I'm going to keep an eye out for this uh, dragon kin that I have to mention. Oh. Okay. Uh,. Well, all right. Well, in that case, someone should, uh, I, I say, it's old stage whispering, uh, someone should keep an eye on Teferi and Mel. I was kind of actually going to do a, like, a little sneaky. I was feeling a bit snarky and sassy, but maybe that, mm -hmm. may, maybe I'll go sneak instead. Yeah, you can sneak now, snack later, stay sassy always. All righty. Alistair, can you converge on our location? Yeah, I, I can get out of here. That's not a problem. I'm supposed um, to bring all these screens with me. I'm going to uh, keep, keep an eye on my uh, comms and I do whatever I can because I'm going to try yeah. to trail uh, yeah. the blue for Bryforian. I want Alistair to back up, um, Chrisif, and I'm going to go and have a look outside for this um, Dragonkin. Puka, um, no stealth check needed. You are easily able to track her um, she, or trail her. She sort of steps out into a hallway connect connected to the Crystal Dome. Um, and like quickly, quickly walks over to a big 
potted plant with lots and lots of fronds. And you see her kneel down, slip something out of her pocket, and stick it into the soil of the pot. Okay, nice. Does the Rhyphorian walk on, or it just kind of stays there? Um, she will... So, uh, she's about to... She's sort of, like, looking around, um, and she is going to continue down this hallway. I, uh... Just before she goes out of sight that I know where to follow, I'm just going to say, at my coordinates, there's a planter. The Rhyphorian placed something in there. I'm going to continue trailing. Understood. I'll keep an eye on it. Okay. <laughs> and as she goes off, I'm gonna like wander out once they've we've gone and I'm gonna stick my hand in this planter, see whatever I find. You find a small device blinking red. Are you trained in computers or engineering? Yeah, I've got computers and engineering. Okay, make a check, please. Oh, no, let's do computers, I guess. Come on, baby. 18. 18. You're not exactly sure what kind of um, c communication device it is, but you mm. can tell it is transmitting something. Cool. After, got a job for you, mate. Meet you by the cheese sticks. Uh, okay. Um, and it goes towards the cheese sticks. Um, okay. Uh, by the cheese sticks, Alistair, you've got this mm -hmm. device. Um, the two of you are back. Uh, go mm -hmm. ahead and make an engineering. Check Can I me. aid since I'm I'm with him mm -hmm. checking out? Yeah, go ahead and take the plus two already since uh, Greylance did identify what type okay. of technology. Some kind of transmitter, I think. So that's 30 for Alistair. So 32 altogether okay this is a pinpoint transmitter um it specifically transmits location data hmm. because of your okay. ex ex like mm -hmm. extraordinary <laughs> engineering mm. tech you recognize that this technology um would typically be used uh with multiple transmitters devices um mm -hmm. placed in the area that you're trying mm -hmm. to like like pinpoint essentially uh, triangulation devices yeah basically. exactly thank you right. someone right. someone is looking for someone or something and they're using these to narrow it down um i think alice is going to very quickly look at gray lance like put up comms and go okay someone should i find something We've been compromised. One moment, everything's going to go dark. And Alistair's going to pull out the trans signal jammer and turn it on. What? what, what wait a minute. Look, 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 look. It, this is a triangulation device. That means there's more of these transmitting. So there's more hidden around here somewhere. At least if I've turned on the signal jammer, okay, we can't talk to each other anymore, but that means those things can't transmit either. Doesn't that mean that the entire party can't transmit either? We blow our cover. No, well, yes, but as far as they're concerned, it's a technical problem. Things go but wrong with comm systems all the time. Um, while you're doing that, and since you're near <laughs> the cheese sticks, uh, one, <laughs> save me, save me one, save me a few, uh, and two, uh, keep an eye out for how uh, Teferi and Mel will react as you do this. Am I still there, by the way, also? I'm also, like, in the middle of the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm saying this over team comms while I'm still mm. trailing the other. Yeah, uh, we've got like com, like FBI style comm links. <laughs> yes. Don't touch your ears. Just just talk. Well, yes. our <laughs> own comm links go go dark. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This so this is the last message. Yes. I, I, then Puka will say like, "I will trail. I won't engage. I'll uh, I'll try to think about maybe not uh, considering engaging." And I'll make my way back. If she tries to run, don't be afraid to detain her, though. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Hit it, Asta. Um, let's go. He hits the button to start jamming everything. Um, 
you are far better at reading crowds and crowd control than I am. <laughs> I think I'm going to go back to the comms bit and see if I can tinker with this and see if I can find out where the, its friends are. I'm just going to hold on to us and say, if we haven't got communications, it might be best that you stay nearby the rest of us. True, although I can see you. There are still cameras operational. They don't rely on radio signal. So I, I've got cameras. I can see the whole area. If I see anyone trying to attack you, I'll come running out, gun out ready. That's not really what I meant, but fair enough. You think me more useful elsewhere. All right. Splitting the party. You're strong. Yeah. You're strong. No, 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 no. no. You're, you and Chrysus are like the two biggest battle tanks I've ever seen in history. If anyone tries anything terrible, you two are more than capable of containing it till my little live backside can get into the room. Alistair, have you considered that if somebody tries something with you, you're not going to be able to handle it? What's the worst that could happen? Who's going to grab after a little technician? Never in a say room? those words. Lots, lots of people, Alistair. Look, just be careful. If you really want to leave, if you want really want to leave the party, I understand it's, in, it's a bit intimidating for you, but keep in mind, all right? I know, mum's the word. It's fine. I, I mean, I'm a style finder. I can defend myself. All right, it's all right. <laughs> no, it's only good stars. <laughs> stars, all right. Look, I've got to go and keep an eye out for this dragon king. All right, just don't do anything stupid and stay safe. You know me. You know me. Stupidity is not my. Okay, I'm not answering that one. Yeah, um... that's fine. All right. As you already have, you already hit the switch. So yeah, off? switch right. switch is off now. Everything's okay. off. All right, okay. we're going dark. Let's go. Um, Puka. Yeah. Are you still trailing the Rhyphorian woman? Mm-hmm. Okay. This time I would like a stealth check, please. Okay. It would actually be so cool if the lights actually turned off in there. That would be so cool. It's, it's just the radio. I know. <laughs> it's I got, know. They've got, like, they've got like Google lights or something. Everything switches off. Yeah. <laughs> like, and at, and most people Wi-Fi. aren't getting phone calls anymore. Yeah. Right. Like, and that's only Fine. if they're not connected to the wireless <laughs> with their, their hmm. phones. Boring. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, 18 plus 9 is a 27. 27. Okay. You are easily able to tail her. Um, she, uh, from the hallway where she put it in the potted plant, she kind of like, she's walking around the exterior of the building. Um, and at one point she comes into, uh, let's say like a a what looks like a like a conference room very much similar to the rooms that you uh like have your pre-mission briefings in um and you like looking through the crack in the door you see her as she like puts one of the the the, the, the tr- transmitters underneath the very large conference table i mean very large it's got to fit dragons so it's really big <laughs> then i will i'm gonna count on my speed to do this to wait until uh, the Rhyphorian gets out again and dart in as fast as I can to grab the communication and try to keep up the trail because I will have a brief blind spot. Cool. And uh, I will say Alistair probably told you all how to like mm. turn those off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they're no longer blinking. At the very Righty, point. tidy, lefty, Lucy. <laughs> yes. Uh, north, south, west, east. Never eat soggy pancakes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Wait, so... what? What? <laughs> Never eat soggy pancakes. North, north east, east, south, west. Pancakes. Oh, pancakes? But... Waffles, waffles, sorry. Waffles. waffles. <laughs> I had pancakes you yesterday. You guys all agree. Uh, don't you know pancakes <laughs> is spelled with a W? <laughs> yeah, don't you know? Yeah. Wankakes? God. Wankakes. Wankakes. Hello. <laughs> okay. Don't eat those either. Great job, Puka. Do you want to... Definitely those. If you follow her, you, you can easily catch up with your great stealth check. And plus your... Um, uh, hyperactivity. Uh, she heads back into the gala at this point. I will continue tracing her into the gala. Even if I can, like, run somehow bypass another room, get ahead of her, and just, like, come out of a bathroom. I mean, like... <laughs> so, like, I was actually in front of her, never behind her. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Um, what are the rest of you doing? I think I'm going to look around for this. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. I think I'm spreading out from Greyland, however, keeping him in eyesight at all times. Um, we we have we can connect, so we can still talk. You're absolutely right. However, 
looking looking at you is better than just hearing you know um but everyone's kind of in a state of disarray no i mean people people's comms devices just turned off so they're just like hello like well uh, who's talking on the phone during a party uh Mm. yeah maybe the person we're looking for (laughs) i mean at the very least security would be like what the fuck but presumably Mm. you've let them know what's Mm. going on I or I think we did. I mean, the you guys are. suspected of communication taps be looking more than usual annoyed. Exactly. Maybe they're on the phone all the time. Maybe they're communicating with each other now that doesn't work anymore. So who's going? Is anyone going to look at slash talk to to Safari and Mel? Sure. Why not? Okay, Chrissy. Uh, Tafari Mel is a winter-born Rhyforian. Um, uh, his his blue fur is a little more grayish. He is a little older. Um, he's wearing a very like like a matte black blazer. Got a little, little bit of a sheen oh. to it. Um, oh. it's a very sleek cut, and he's like leaning. He has a long. Um, like an old old school cigarette holder, and he's vaping. Bit of work. And his eyebrows are like white and come up like night elves, like this. Oh, I love it. Mm-hmm. This person is for me. Um. <laughs> all right. Um. I think I will then. I'll I'll walk up. I'll do a salute. I'll bow slightly. Um, and I go, I'm sorry, I don't think we've been formally introduced. My he, name is Chris Fenfire. He extends a hand, like, loosely for you to just kind of shake. Sure, I, I shake it. Safari and Mal. Hello. Hello. It is nice to meet you. I am one of the, um, Starfinders, I'm, I'm part of the Starfinders company. Um, I... I've been on many, many expeditions out there. I've um, enjoyed them uh, a lot. Um, <laughs> um, it seems you are very interested in our society. Is there any questions that I could answer for you? Sure. Are there an awful lot of dragonkin in the Starfinder Society? <laughs> Not many sadly they usually stay here on triaxis um i am one of the few um just because i've always been curious about what's out there and let's say i've had a wanderlust hmm. and what is your background you, did you train with the starfinders or your education on triaxis I've done most of my knight's education on Triaxis. I've been um, brought up as a knight um, right here, actually, um, somewhere in the garrisons. Uh, uh, a knight? Uh, yes. No affiliation with any Dragon Corps? No, absolutely not. I have, because we are such a neutral city i've chosen to always keep myself as neutral as possible therefore not aligning myself with either human or dragon corporations of any kind can you make a diplomacy check please yes please Mm. that's definitely something kumo city council member wants to hear Yes, mm. I guess so. I hope so. Yeah. 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 The lower difficulty. Right? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to her for free, right? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Don't fall. Right Don't away. Fall. I mean, she's saying all the right words. Yeah. <laughs> but the fucking diplomacy is not great. It's 10 diplomacy in all. Very bad. <laughs> yes, well. Uh... I assume you're just a, like every other dragonkin knight looking for adventure and glory out there in the big scary vast. I am 
I hoped I wouldn't have given off that air about me. Um, I uh, certainly am not looking for any brave stories to tell. I am simply working with the society to make sure our galaxy is safe, explored, and knowledge is brought back. A quaint. Excuse me, I think I see someone I know. And like Ugh. blows a, a puff of blows vape. the smoke in my face. Okay, <laughs> I like I like hold Brush his in. head. <laughs> I hold in my cough until he's gone in the night. <clears throat> um and then I will stand there and look exactly where he's going. Not he's, hiding any of that. He's going to like talk to some other people. Ugh. Yeah, nothing. Hmm. Um mm. Uh, okay, we've got Grey Lance and Alistair. Oh, um, uh, Alistair, go ahead, go first. Um, Alistair is going to sit up in this comm room and try and disassemble this communicator, try and see if he can figure out its origin or any information about it. Uh, uh he, no. with your engineering yeah. check earlier, <laughs> like, you know that it's a translocation, but okay. uh, you're not going to get You can't tell more. where it's going to go gonna from. Get anything more out of it. Okay. Um, I think he's going to spend most of his time then running security and trying to make sure the jam is working. Because while he can't figure out if it's been breached from his AI or the signal jammer, he can watch incoming communications. And if things are coming in, then the jam is not working. Um, can he, Alistair? Can he maybe Alistair? Like... Mm -hmm. oh, I, guess I, I guess I'd have to go up to Alistair because our communicators don't work. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I would uh, show him the deactivated uh, transponder mm. that I found. And I'm like, uh, if, if you're going to uh, later look into this further, uh, see who issue, see about who that person is that I trailed. What's their name? What's their affiliation? That's a good idea. Um, I think he'll take the transponder. And Puka true. will head to the cheese stick mm. table because <laughs> right there were reserved cheese sticks. Um, in that case, Alistair is going to engross himself in the guest list, trying to find out. And and I don't want to say it, but I know it's number two, Alistair. He's going to be so engrossed in what he does, he is not going to be paying attention to anything around him in the room. Make a computer's check. Manchego. <laughs> 29. 29. Um, you are looking like, like cross-referencing mm. an image of the Rhyphorian woman mm. with the images from the guests. You like quick, 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 go through, pull up her invitation. Boom. Mm -hmm. It's another forged invitation. Yep. Oh, fantastic. So we've been infiltrated. Um, I think at that point, Alistair's, rather than immediately running out, because now he can't communicate, he'd have to run out of the room, um, he's going to start looking at all the other people on camera, and it's an intensive task, but he's going to try cross-referencing as many faces as he can against the invitations to try and see if he can ascertain if there's any other forged. Well, we know that we, we know we've got two forged right already, so look for the two yeah. we know. So, Greylands, are you looking for the green dragon kin? Man? Yeah, I, I, I'm fairly sure that Puka's got um, the Red Foreign on hand. I'm going to go and look for the dragon kin. Okay, um, he's not immediately in the gala, so if you decide to check the buildings, um, yeah. I'll ask for perception or athletics. Cool. Um, it's not athletics, huh? Mm. That's going to be athletics, I guess. Let's do it. Let's not do it. It's a 10. 10. Yeah. Um, you're walking through these empty halls and uh, like it, you're, you're unable to, to find him. Um, and at this point... Oh, actually, can I ask if my maze mind, which allows me to make my way around halls and various places with ease, would that aid at all? Reroll. Okay. Nice. Because, <laughs> yeah, the labyrinthine. Well, that's a 16. 16. Mm, yeah. Okay. 
try to, <laughs> you know, I'm rooting for you. But... No, hey, you, you, you gave me the reroll, man. I'm okay with it. It's cool. Okay. And I've got like a, I've got like a plus nine to athletics, so it's on me. <laughs> Alistair, mm -hmm. at this point, I need some dramatic music. <laughs> Are you asking uh, Alistair for the music? Or? The <laughs> crowd party music ambience was very good. Oh, I yeah. really felt it like the, the random little applauses in the background. Like, <laughs> really, at one point. 1920s. That was like 1920s track from from Tabletop Audio. 1920s speakeasy. <laughs> Alistair, as you're mm -hmm. on the console, you like big red alert pops up. First things first, the servers have been hacked remotely. Second, you are able to, like, these two beacons light mm -hmm. up on, like, a, a monitor with uh, on a map of the lodge. Mm -hmm. And you instantly, you're like, those are the, the two, those are two, the yeah. two other transmitters. Um, but it's too late. Your mm -hmm. uh, uh, signal jammer was broken through. Um, just FYI, the, well, okay, I won't, well, let's show, not tell. <laughs> um, so you know, know him instantly that your signal jammer was, mm -hmm. uh, broken through. Breached. Um, uh, Zephaldrin, like, like some of you can see him in the, um, the dome as he's looking at his data pad, like, like tapping his thing, like, what the hell? Why isn't it? And he sees the, the three of mm. you and like beckons you to the comms room and gathers the four of you there. Right. Um, and he sees you, Alistair looking at the console. Ah, so you know already. Uh, th there's, and he, he, he points mm. at the screen. There's been an unauthorized data transfer from the lodge computers. <sighs> he fumes. You have, you have unwanted, un uninvited guests too. I recommend yeah, the lockdown. We, we spotted two already. Uh, yeah. Like Forium, Blue Fur, Dragonkin, Green Scales. Oh, this can't be, of course. Uh, but, but look, they're they're transmitting the data to some a starship it's, in orbit. It's it's fine. That's can I think Alice is gonna try and like he can't stop it, it's too late, but he's gonna try and like counter hack and they've try, got like, copies of nearly in. everything, Alice. They've heard. they're already they're already mm -hmm. midway through this this hack house though. And Alistair, as you begin like typing, mm -hmm. um there's an incoming transmission. Oh. The weathered visage of an old mm -hmm. white dragon appears. Dragon, um, not dragon kin. Dragon. Mm. But behind her shoulder, standing behind where this dragon is seated in the captain's seat. Imagine how big that seat must be <laughs> oh. uh, on a starship. Mm. Is your friend, ex-friend, the white-scale dragonkin woman, Farvenzi, oh. ringing evilly. We see this old white dragon, a twitch in her, in one of her eyes, belaying, belying a detached demeanor. She's just glaring. Zephaldrin breaks the silent regard. You, you seem... Upset. <laughs> Just explain yourself, and I'm sure we can talk this out, maybe? The old white dragon shakes her head and presses a button on her display. Hush now. I want to savor this. And you all can see the, the, a, a light growing brighter from the dome as a new star blooms in the sky above and a roar builds in the air and the transmission oh, cuts when a starship bombardment hits the lodge <gasps> I oh that's not I knew bad. it oh man and oh, I... oh we fucked up you did you got half of the beacons which means mm. the damage is not so bad uh, okay <laughs> uh... i will say also i want to say alistair in the transmission mm. you can see um a Rhyforian like science officer in the background, like mm. furiously working to hack through your your jammer. Uh, they had a plus twenty three to computers, so there was no way. No, yeah. right, right. Uh. I knew, I knew that it wasn't to find someone. I immediately, when you said triangulation device, I was like, they are going to 
bomb us? <laughs> there is going to be shit dropped on our fucking doorstep. <laughs> I, d- I, d- I didn't know for sure. <laughs> and that's where we'll end oh. today's session. Oh, oh. 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 so sc- <laughs> Well, that didn't that didn't end how I thought it was going to end when we said dramatic music. I, I, I had a different ending in mind there. <laughs> oh, I like it. So, what um, what kind of skills is our is our dragon? Bronze. Brass. Bronze. Uh, oh, brass. brass. Okay, brass? so different. Then. Brass and bronze. Uh, yes. Nah. Well, in terms I mean, of dragons, or in terms of the color, in they're different metals. Dragons. Ah, dragons are so problematic, Gary Gygax. Why well, do they, why do they all got to be different colors? He's yeah, problematic. Bronze, bronze is like mm-hmm. is like brown as in brass. Brass is close to gold. Mm-hmm. Brass is neutral good, and bronze is chaotic good. Yes. Uh, oh. I don't know. Bronze I, for I sure. Can... Is, bronze for sure is chaotic. That's where but we... like good cat. Where I like we... the ones that want to talk all the time. They're brass, right? Copper. Copper? Yeah. Right. Uh, see, brass, bronze, copper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you imagine meeting one and being like, oh, good, it's a talky one. And it's like, no, actually, I'm bronze. I just <laughs> got a tan. <laughs> 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 um, but, okay, cool. That was an awesome session. Yeah, that, that was tense. So um, scary. <laughs> uh, I love the way the gala, like, started and then, like, slowly... Like Alistair's like paranoid. Zephyr it slowly like, oh, descended into chaos. Yeah, yeah, like oh wait, something's going on. Wait, uh, what are these things? Wait, what's going on? Uh, wait, ah! follow this person. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh god. Oh god. Well, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. great session. Good yeah. pacing. We, we finished that. We finished that like a, a really nice. Mm. clear point yeah mm. i learned my lesson after the first session where we did a similar gala and mm-hmm, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. everyone takes actions instead of like saying this round who wants to go i just made notes silently about mm. it. and yeah. then after everyone took three actions the bombs drop <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, <laughs> that's very blatant like that. that's very blatant in the dark timing <laughs> progression clocks oh yeah progression clocks yeah yeah it yeah. is it is i didn't yeah. think I could, I, I could have easily just drawn a clock here mm, pizza mm. um okay let's go into plugs everyone <laughs> um inez why don't you kick us off fine i'll do it god <laughs> So, so, I always do it. No, I do it with, <laughs> uh, with pleasure. I love going first. I truly do. Hi. <laughs> it is me, your friend, Inez. Um, that was kind of crazy. <laughs> God. I'm a little scared. I hope we don't die. Um, <laughs> oh, it's not going to be good. It's, no, it's definitely not going to be good. There's a reason you got those. You 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 know. There's a reason you got those six Mark II healing serums. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, that that is crazy. Oh my god. I can't wait wait for the next time. <laughs> um, let's see. You can. Uh, hi. Yes, it's me. <laughs> Where am I? Who am I? <laughs> um, I've already told you who I am. So now I'm going to go over into social media, which is um, XXSucubusGF or just SucubusGF. My face is everywhere. It's very, very easy to find me. Um, My Twitter and TikTok are most active. My TikTok is kind of busted, I'd say. (laughs) I like it. I I really like posting little TikToks and being a little silly girl. Um, It's very, it's very fun. Um, so check that out. And on Twitter is where I post when I go live and do all kinds of things. Um, especially this week. This week is going to be a lot of, like, penultimate and final episodes. Um, it's very, very crazy. Because on Wednesday, over on Lightfoot Rogue, uh, the Twitch channel, I will have the penultimate episode of our Vampire the Masquerade campaign, um, where um, <laughs> it's it's going to be very, very dramatic. My character is going to turn into death. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> um, and the other character might die. Who knows? You know, it's going to be very, very dramatic. Um, so come check that out. It's it's very cool characters. I play uh, a t- a one Toreador and one uh, a Tremere, I think right yes um magic lots of magic um and it's gonna be very cool and very dramatic and i'm very very excited so come check that out on wednesday 
And then on Saturday, is that this Saturday? It it's is. This fucking Saturday. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. We will have the final episode of our Vampire the Masquerade yeah. campaign right mm. here uh, called A Study in Ivory, where we will be having the last episode. I <laughs> don't know how I'm going to be able to cope. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Answer? Oh, no. Um, it's going to be very, very emotional and very, very cool. And it's going to be very, very full of intrigue. I play uh, Megara Monet, the gangrel build like a brick house absolute big muscle woman um who also have has a little mouse as a pet so um yeah it's it's gonna be very very fun and very very emotional and i hope you come watch that on saturday right here um other than that i don't have a lot of plugs anymore <laughs> that's it for me i love you um hi i'm pan i'm your nemesis and once again it has forsaken you you warned it was coming i'm outside <laughs> i'm sorry although honestly if i looked out my window and saw you there i would love it if you yeah. <laughs> saw me there i'm not doing my job properly i'm behind i'm behind your green screen there you go <laughs> coming, <laughs> coming to get you my stealth's real high <laughs> Only the, the knife through the green screen. You and she, ah! <laughs> she let you down. <laughs> Once again, she let you down. She's not your friend. It's me. I'm coming to get you. Oh, oh my no. God. Scream eight. <laughs> I'm Pan. Uh, I've been um, Grey Lance, as always. Um, this has been a lot of fun. Um, really glad to be back. Thank you all for watching. Um, you can catch me on Salon Core on Twitter. Um, you can also catch me taking art in the good pods ttrpg takeover um where this um uh, podcast app is going to be like just showing off loads of tabletop uh, role-playing uh, podcasts and i'm going to be throwing my hat in that ring so uh please do check out on twitter and please do drop reviews as well as well for this show too um really really helps uh you know just like mm -hmm. if you don't want to write anything you can't think anything to write and how it is just give that five stars and uh, and bounce it's cool you can do that that's fine <laughs> Um, I all my stuff on my Twitter. You can find all this on my Emma type in. Um, I'll be back here again next week, guys. Next week. Mm -hmm. Next mm -hmm. week. So yes, that's what's up. Awesome. I think I'll I'll take on from here then. Um, hi, I've been Hedgehog uh, at Hedgehog UK on most places. Um, I love tonight. The ending took me by surprise. I honestly thought the ending was going to be. Alistair was so preoccupied he didn't notice that Farfenzi was behind him. Uh -huh. um, and <laughs> like she's got a knife in the green screen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's, that's what when you said dramatic, I was like, I know I split the party and I asked for this and I am ready for this. I, I am ready for my punishments. I know oh, I've done wrong. In there. Okay. <laughs> um, Close up. <laughs> exactly. Um as for you can find me, um, aside from being here, I'm over on my own uh, channel, Miss Adventures League. Um, our main campaign on Saturdays is taking a little bit of hiatus um, while we get some scheduling out the way, because I work with freelancers and April is the best month for freelancers because everyone suddenly has money in their budgets again. Um, so there's work everywhere. Um, but on Thursday, uh, 7, 7 p.m.? Yeah, 7 p.m. Uh, BST now, not GMT, I gotta remember that. Um, we are having episode five of our uh, little Fallout Misadventures in Appalachia campaign, um, the halfway point. Um, we've got five more weeks of that, a week off, and then we start a Vampire the Masquerade game, um, which I am bricking it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have started building the what they call is it the relationship map i've started building that and it's getting very big um and it's like okay <laughs> we um, know we know <laughs> very familiar with that yes. i can link you to the one we use for a study in ivory oh. because it is massive it's huge um aside from that that's, that's me uh, I, hope, I hope everyone had a great night And hi, it's me, Ida. I am not actually uh, 
super high pitched golden retriever energy. Well, I may be sometimes, but immediately I go、uh, into a corner, into my turtle shell, and I recharge my social batteries.、Uh, it's very on and off with me, so、mm-hmm. not 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 entirely Puka, except when I absolutely have to be.、Um, speaking of high energy, low energy,、uh, tomorrow you can find me at Horde of Tales, continuing our Eberron campaign, where I play a very vivacious,、uh, thirsty in your face、uh, sorcerer. And、uh, tomorrow's session is going to be uh, dedicated uh, to、uh, WaveAF, which is Women Against Violence Against Women, for their、mm-hmm. Streaming for Survivors、uh, campaign to raise funds for the、uh, the Canadian uh, uh, Rape Crisis Center, which provides、uh, free gender affirming care to survivors of sexualized violence. A really important cause. A lot、mm-hmm. of other communities have been、uh, streaming for them. So、uh, swing by. Give what you can if you're able, or share the word and come engage because that helps other donators find us as well. On Thursday at Horde of Tales, we're going to start a brand new AP、uh, called、um, with the Aether system. It's a card basis instead of a, a dice based system.、Ooh. We have an amazing international. Diverse, representative <laughs> cast of great storytellers, and I can't wait for you to meet them and find out and love this story.、Uh, that's going to be Thursday's Word of Tell at、uh, 7 p.m. BST or 2 p.m.、Uh, Eastern Standard Time, Eastern Summer Time. And on Saturday,、um, Sa- Friday, Saturday, Sunday is going to be Big Bad Online Weekend.、Uh, mm. A lot of us. I'm thinking to this audience here.、Like、we can't really make it all the way to California to Big Bad Con and the amazing panels they have,、uh, where people of、uh, diverse backgrounds、uh, share their experiences and their knowledges and their knowledge. But they do have online panels where we can all、uh, join, ask questions, and be part of it without having to travel or those who are uncomfortable or unable to do so because of concerned、uh, health risks, etc. Check them out on Twitter.、Uh, find out their、um, their menu. There's going to be something you like. I promise. All times of the day, I'm going to be modding uh, to uh, panels at、uh, it's going to be eight in the morning and nine in the morning、uh, BST, for example.、Mm. So there's something for、mm. everyone. Go check that out. And、uh, last but not least, roll for good. Roll for good. Roll for good. Well, for good is、mm-hmm. a UK UK EU TTRPG community who is dedicated to doing good in the world、uh, through their love of role playing games. We're going to be、uh, raising funds for ILGA,、uh, LGBTQIA plus fight for human rights,、um, on May twenty seventh and twenty eighth. GM signups are closing on Wednesday.、Mm-hmm. Wednesday is the last full day you can do this.、Mm-hmm. After that, no more. But we're still going to need producers. We need mods. We need video editors. We need master of ceremonies. We need、uh, people who want to help out with giveaways.、Uh, do you、uh, have modules? Do you have、um, physical items you care to? You can donate digitally as well. Every any little bit things helps hype us up and helps us raise more money for this really important charity. So check us out at Twitter,、uh, roll for good, F O R roll for good, and I hope to see you there. And I have been your host and GM this evening, Krifu Bernal. <laughs> yeah, um, bleh, and yeah, we. <laughs> what am I? So we do,、uh, as Inez mentioned, on Saturday <clears throat> is the season finale of our Vampire the Masquerade actual play, A Study in Ivory. <laughs> Um, should be pretty epic, I think,、uh, and we'll see.、Epic. We'll see what happens. We'll、Yay. see what happens. <laughs> and then Monday, of course, we'll be back for the thrilling conclusion、mm-hmm. of this adventure to conquer the dragon. That's a great title for it, I think. Yes, <laughs> or to not get ourselves conquered by dragons.、Mm-hmm. Yeah.、Uh, bombarded. <laughs> so make sure you tune in for that. Please check、mm. out the YouTube and the、mm. Discord for all the other awesome stuff at Mana Pot, and yeah, that's gonna be <laughs> it. We're gonna raid over to Utopia. They、yes. are、Ooh. playing、oh, tabletop、nice. RPGs. It looked like it was a Western thing. Oh,、uh, and it's only、cool. episode two, so it's not like there's.、Uh, you don't have to worry about being too far behind. Good show, Mister. So stay tuned for the raid, and we will see you next time, Starfinders, <laughs> for another episode of Space Flight and Kill. <laughs> I love、Bye. you. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.